Baseball is about homecoming. It is a journey by theft and strength, guile and speed. Out around first to the far island of second, where foes lurk in the reeds and the green sea suddenly grows deeper. Then it turns sharply, skimming the shallows, making for a shore that will show a friendly face, a color, a familiar language, and at third to proceed no longer by paths indirect, but straight to home. Hello, friend. Welcome me home again. I've been away, but that's all over now, now. Say I can stay for October now. Stay wild and play. In the first two games of the World Series, the San Francisco Giants have run into some tremendous pitching. Dave Stewart of the A's threw a shutout in game one. And Mike Moore in the Oakland bullpen did the job in game two. At the plate, punch has been provided by people like Dave Parker and Terry Steinbach. And the A's have won the first two games of the World Series and are halfway to their first world title since 1974. The giant dugout full of long faces all weekend. Hello. Tonight, the Giants home to host the A's in game three. Hello, old friend. And home for the Giants, one of the most spectacular vistas on this continent, any continent. Downtown San Francisco in the background, and we zoom into Candlestick Park in the southeastern corner of this city for the first time in 27 years. A World Series game will be played in Candlestick Park. The Battle of the Bay continues. Game three of the 1989 World Series, the Oakland Athletics against the San Francisco Giants. I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to game three. It's been dominant Oakland pitching of course in the first two games. So Roger Craig has made some changes in the Giants lineup. Ken Oberkfell the great pinch hitter will start at third base. Matt Williams moves from th third base to shortstop. Jose Uribe is on the bench. Pat Sheridan takes over for Candy Maldonado in right field. Now the Giants of course are faced with a formidable task having to win four or five in essence to win the world title. It has become less uncommon though in recent years for teams to overcome a two love deficit. Most recently it was done by the New York Mets in 1986 against the Boston Red Sox and it was done the year before as well in 1985 by Kansas City against St. Louis. So the Giants tonight will be sending Don Robinson to the mound and for Oakland it will be Bob Welch and there's no designated hitter in effect in the National League Park. Let me turn now to Tim McCarver and you know Tim we talked in game one the final score was five nothing but there was a key early play involving Terry Kennedy dropping a throw from Will Clark at the plate. We go back to game two. The score was five to one. But there were two key plays early in that one as well. Well you don't often think of key plays in a five to one ball game. But let's go back to the top of the third inning. Will Clark the batter. The Giants have not had the lead in these two games. A three two count. A split finger fastball by Mike Moore. Pounced on by Terry Steinbach the Oakland catcher but look at the tough throw that he had to complete the play with Brett Butler running between him and Clark F flash forward to the bottom of the fourth inning Dave Parker barely by inches just misses a home run Candy Maldonado with the hesitation allowing Jose Canseco to score and he fails to get Dave Parker at second base so the Oakland A's take take I'll tell you what we have an address. Well, <laughs> I don't know 
if we're on the air. We are in commercial, I guess. Yes, yes, we hear you. I guess I don't hear a thing. I guess they are. But we are. Well, folks, that's the greatest open in the history of television, bar none. <laughs> yes, it certainly did. <laughs> We're still here. <laughs> we are still, as we can tell, on the air, and I guess you are hearing us, even though we have no picture and no return audio, and we will be back, we hope, from San Francisco in just a moment. We have a breaking story. Here's Susan. There apparently has been a major earthquake in San Francisco. We have Ken Chamberlain on the phone. Ken, what can you tell us? Ken, are you there? Can you hear me? We apparently are having audio problems. Again, there apparently has been a major earthquake in San Francisco. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Again, apparently there has been a major earthquake in San Francisco. Our phone lines went temporarily dead. We are now on an emergency phone line. CNN San Francisco Bureau Chief Ken Chamberlain is on the phone. Ken, what can you tell us? Well, like you said, uh, we've, we've lost our uh, phones here. I'm on an emergency phone that the Bureau has. The, the power is out in our building. Our, our building is a rather large building, and it, it shook quite violently during the earthquake. It uh, knocked pictures from the walls ceiling tiles have fallen in the bureau and i have to tell you right now we are in a sort of a state of disarray here in san francisco ken have you had any reports on damage or injuries have you been able to establish contact with authorities we haven't been able to establish contact with anyone uh, right now except for our home office there in atlanta the earthquake happened about seven minutes ago and uh, all communications at least to this building that we're in are out. We are, as I said, operating on emergency power here in this building and uh, have just the one phone line that's working at the moment. Ken, apparently the earthquake was felt at Candlestick Park. Do you have any idea where the epicenter is? It's, it's impossible for me to tell. Um, where we are downtown in San Francisco is an area that has been hit several times in the past. I have felt earthquakes here but this has been the most violent shaker I have felt in a good number of years in this area. Uh, as far as Candlestick Park goes, they are out on the edge of the bay. Of course, there will be a lot of people out there uh, at this hour getting ready for the World, to watch the World Series games, and I just couldn't tell you uh, what the situation is out there. Ken, describe exactly what happened from your standpoint and what people did there. Well, in this bureau, we uh, first felt a mild shaking which uh, gradually became more and more violent. I and several of the staff members ducked under our desks and waited for the, the shaking to stop. When I looked out, uh, pictures were off the wall, ceiling tiles had fallen. No broken glass that I can see, but a, a, a lot of uh, objects knocked off of shelves and, and as I said, uh, some damage apparently to this bureau. All right, CNN San Francisco Bureau Chief Ken Chamberlain on the major earthquake in San Francisco. We will, of course, update you just as soon as we get more information. Lou? We'll continue on with our uh, broadcast while we're waiting for further information from San Francisco. If you have just joined us, we have a major breaking story in San Francisco, the Bay Area, and parts south and east now, we understand. A few minutes ago, if you were listening... Uh, we were able to inform you only that power and phones were out to our San Francisco Bureau. We had our Bureau Chief out there uh, on an emergency backup phone who told us there had been a major shake in San Francisco, but he was more or less cut off from the outside world, unable to get out by telephone. Power was cut. We have been able to get through to San Jose, California. On the line with us is Dick Fennell. Dick, uh, pass along your experiences. I'm in South San Jose area in the Monterey, Monterey Peninsula area, and it was about uh, 10 minutes ago. <clears throat> uh, it lasted for about, uh, say, uh, uh, 10 seconds, uh, 15 seconds, and it shook uh, the whole uh, uh, house uh, structure, knocked off bottles, uh, books and things, and uh, it was powerful enough possibly to 
to uh, knock down uh, on power lines. Uh, we haven't lost our power. Of course, we have our phones. You can you could speak to me on this. But uh, uh, we did have that, uh, say, about 10 minutes ago. I would say it would be uh, in the seven, uh, six, seven range. Six, we seven. did have a slight aftershock about another uh, two or three minutes afterwards, and we may get another aftershock. What makes you say six or seven range? That's a mighty big earthquake, Dick. Well, it's the biggest one that uh, I've, uh, I've been here for uh, roughly 30 years, and uh, it's the biggest one I've ever experienced uh, in the peninsula area here. You're in a residential area, is that Re correct? Residential area, uh, uh, on the Monterey Peninsula, and that was very strong. Have you checked with your neighbors? Uh, can you give us an assessment of what ha what has happened in your neighborhood? Well, like I say, I've called uh, the emergency numbers, and uh, they're uh, uh, working on the peninsula with power lines and uh, and and different uh, uh, activities. And so, uh, most of the lines are busy for PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric. You were not able to get through, is that right? Not able to get through. That's right. Uh, you say you've been in the area for thirty years. Uh, right. What kind of damage from a shaker of this size would you expect in your area? Well, uh, uh, it depends on the structure. Uh, uh, if you have older homes, of course, the brick types, uh, uh, of course, you'll be getting additional uh, uh, coverage of this from your different stringers uh, in the San Jose and the other areas. But uh, uh, you'd probably get some uh, uh, falling uh, walls and, and things of that nature. Are, are you able, uh, since your phone is uh, in use, are you able to contact uh, any of your friends or relatives, possibly in other parts of California? Have you attempted to do that? Yeah, we'll probably be doing that. Oh, you haven't done so yet? Not yet. So you won't be able to give us any information about what's happening? We're just checking electrical and uh, gas lines and things of that nature. Do you have your local radio and television stations on the air? No, the power is completely off. Power is out? Yeah. Okay, Dick Fennell, thanks. Thanks so much for uh, t talking with us. Uh, Dick Fennell, who lives in San Jose, as we told you, the quake shook San Francisco. We also have reports that it hit as far south as Fresno, which is 120 miles to the southeast, possibly as far south as L.A. We'll keep you posted. Susan. CNN's Bernard, Bernard Shaw is in Washington. He's talked to the FBI in San Francisco. Bernie, what can you tell us? Uh, Susan, I apologize for sounding a bit winded and coming up dressed as I am, but I was going out the door when we heard the story break. I spoke to a, a spokeswoman there at the FBI in San Francisco, and she tells CNN that, quote, part of the Bay Bridge has collapsed. She said that uh, part of that bridge is in the water. I asked her, in which direction is the bridge? Is it going towards Oakland or coming back? She said it's the uh, part going towards the East Bay. So the FBI tells us tonight that part of the Bay Bridge has collapsed, uh, part of it's in the water, no word on fatals. I asked her whether the FBI had any idea of the severity of the earthquake, the magnitude. I was thinking of the Richter scale. She said, quote, it's pretty severe. It's pretty severe. That's the latest from Washington. Bernie, a question. Bernie? Uh, yes. The Bay Bridge uh, is a two-tier bridge. Were you able to get any information about, uh, you say part of it has collapsed. Would that, did they mention tiers, upper tier, lower tier? No, uh, she did not. It was a very rushed conversation. I was surprised she took the time she did with us, Lou. She just said, I asked her, what does the FBI know about what's going on? And the woman who would not give her name, could not give her name, she said, quote, part of the Bay Bridge has collapsed. And... Uh, they're rushing out uh, service people out there. Back to you, Lou. All right, Bernie, that gives, gives, gives one chills. John McManus is on the line from our CNN San Francisco Bureau now. John? Lou, I'm with you. Okay, tell us what you got. Uh, we're actually on the street outside the Bureau. Uh, the quake seemed very short in duration, but very, very sharp. Uh, sidewalks are cracked, streets are cracked. Uh, brick facades on front of downtown buildings have fallen into the street. We did not uh, see anybody who was injured, but judging by what we did see, we wouldn't be surprised. Um, the electricity is out in the financial district of town, at least in the portions that we are in. People are frantically standing in line at phones trying to make phone calls. There's a general state of confusion down here. Uh, there's smells emanating from the street, smells like natural gas in some places, don't know if that's what it is, and that's about what I've got right now. Yeah, John, uh, a natural gas line breaks is one of the greatest fears of, uh, of a quake, especially in the San Francisco area. Are you hearing any uh, emergency vehicles? We 
have. I'm not hearing any right now. Once again, don't know if that's what it is. We're in a part of the city that was built on uh, Bay Fill, where they filled in San Francisco Bay to build. And uh, the smell could be emanating from uh, some of the Bay Fill. So I don't know for sure what it is. All right. Hang on there just a second, John. We, we also have a report now of... Uh, injuries at Candlestick Park. As you know, this is the third game of the World Series being played at Candlestick Park, which is on the bay that is uh, south of San Francisco. Uh, we have uh, word that the park is being evacuated. Injuries have been reported. That's, that's all we know about that. Is John still on the line? Yes, I am, Lou. Okay, we just talked to Dick Fennell, who's uh, lived in San Jose for 30 years. I, I'm not familiar with your uh, record of residence in San Francisco, but Dick, <laughs> Dick Fennell said he, uh, he thought it would be about a 6 or a 7 on the Richter scale. Does, does that... Does that ring true with you? Uh, Lou, uh, I am a, uh, a native San Franciscan, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we discover that's what it is. And that would, uh, since most folks uh, relate to these numbers, I believe the Los Angeles quake was around a, it was between a six and a seven. Uh, how much damage would something that, like that likely to cause in the Bay Area? This is, that's a major quake. Don't know. We'll, we'll know as uh, reports come in. All right, John McManus of our CNN San Francisco Bureau. We're going to take a break and we're going to collect ourselves and collect more information. We'll continue following this story. Again, there's been a strong earthquake in San Francisco. It is being felt as far away as Los Angeles, Fresno, Sacramento. CNN's John McManus is on the phone. John, apparently they have evacuated Candlestick Park. Do you have any words of injuries, any reports of injuries? John, are you there? Can you hear me? John, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Apparently they have evacuated Candlestick Park. Apparently there are reports of injuries. Can you clarify any of that? I cannot. Uh, we uh, have just left the CNN Bureau in San Francisco and got about a block away in the financial district when the quake struck. So I have no information right now about Candlestick. CNN's Bernard Shaw talked to the FBI in San Francisco. He reports that part of the Bay Bridge has collapsed, the part going to the east. Can you expound on any of that? I can tell you that the Bay Bridge is essentially a two-section bridge. There's a section from San Francisco to an island in the center of San Francisco Bay known as Yerba Buena Island. There is another section that goes east from Yerba Buena to Oakland, the city of Oakland. And uh, it's a suspension bridge. It's a double-layer bridge. Uh, upper levels go westbound, lower levels go eastbound. What about the Golden Gate Bridge? ABC is reporting that it has collapsed. I have no information on that right now. Again, F CNN's Bernard Shaw will talk to the FBI, and the FBI is saying that it is very severe. John, we're going to have to interrupt you. Gary Miller is at Candlestick Park. Gary, what do you have? Well, not much right now. There is a tremendous... Uh sigh of relief really because it's probably the scariest moment I've ever gone through there's no power in the stadium right now so it's at one point they tried to evacuate the upper levels of the stadium and then realized that m that might cause a mass panic of people trying to flood the exits so right now everyone's in their seats the players from the San Francisco Giants and Oakland A's are out on the field for a game that was supposed to start any minute now but it's going to be lengthily delayed if played at all tonight because they're studying whether there's been any damage to the Candlestick Park Stadium structure. And so it'll probably be quite a while before anything gets underway in terms of the World Series. Gary, what are officials telling, if anything, what are officials telling fans in the stands? Right now there's virtually no communication because all the electricity is out in the stadium. So there's no PA to advise fans. And there is, uh, the scoreboards are out, so no information can be passed that way. The, the lights are half out, and I'm just getting word now that the Bay Bridge went down. That's totally unconfirmed, but there are some radio reports here that there's damage to or the Bay Bridge may be down. So I can't confirm that at all, but that's the second time I've heard that tonight. The FBI is apparently also saying that the Bay Bridge is down, at least a section of the Bay Bridge. Set the scene, Gary. Tell us exactly what it was like when it happened, what people did, if you know of any injuries. Okay, okay I... 
The top section came into the bottom on the Bay Bridge, is the word I just got from a local TV station. Now let me set the tone for you at Candlestick Park. I was up about 10 rows from the top of a structure that holds about 58,000 people that had about 45,000 in it as they were waiting for the game. We were, the band had just cleared the field. We were about 10 minutes from the start. The players were running their sprints in the field. We were exchanging small talk and a plane went over at about, I guess it was about six minutes after the hour. And I thought, my God, that's a hell of a tremor for a plane to cause. And all of a sudden, Michael Kalman, our, our L.A. sports reporter, and I looked at each other. And that Michael, who lives out here, and I'm from the Midwest, so I wasn't used to anything like this. And you could look at each other's eyes and suddenly sense, yeah, this is an earthquake. There was a, a tremendous panic at that point because there was a fear on my mind that that stadium was going to collapse and we were all going down. It lasted about 10 seconds of very uh, powerful rocking almost like a roller coaster the entire stadium shook i would say five to ten it seemed like five to ten feet maybe it was only a, a foot or so side to side the entire stadium shook and uh then there was just kind of a fear like what next is it and then now we're still waiting for an aftershock which i guess there's been one but it was very minor and basically we're waiting to see if the other shoe is going to drop around here. So it's kind of Ga scary. Gary, please stand by. We're going to go to Lou right now, but we're going to be back talking with you in just a minute. Lou. All right, Susan, we have John Zersky on the line. John, uh, you're in San Francisco? Yes. And whereabouts are you located? Uh, across from the Moscone Center. And that's where? Uh, probably about five, six blocks from Union Square. PC News. I'm Ted Koppel. There has been a rather strong earthquake in Northern California, so strong, in fact, that it has, among other things, knocked out all the power uh, or much of the power at Candlestick Park, where the third game of the World Series was being played. But in the overall scheme of things, that may be the very least of things that has happened today. Let me show you a piece of video that just came in uh, a few minutes ago. This is, if you look carefully there, you will see that the upper span, that's the Bay Bridge, that connects Oakland and uh, San Francisco. The upper span of that bridge has collapsed there, at least the segment has collapsed. As that video moves in a little bit closer, you'll see there is at least one vehicle down there that uh, uh, apparently slid off the edge of the segment on the left and is now trapped in the crevice there of that segment that is down uh, at an angle. There are many vehicles still on <clears throat> that lower span of the Bay Bridge. You can see people walking around there. They don't seem to be in any immediate danger, but the tremors that uh, shook much of San Francisco, apparently the quake lasted for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then there was an afterquake. I have on the line with me two of my colleagues, Bruce Hall and Mark Nelson. Mark Nelson is out at Candlestick Park. They're on by phone. Uh, this is a live <coughs> shot from our affiliate, our own and operated station in San Francisco, KGO, and you can see that there are at least two major fires that seem to be in progress there. But I'll tell you what, let me go instead now to Bruce Hall, who is at our bureau in San Francisco. And Bruce, maybe you can just give me a sense of what happened, when it happened, and how you became aware of the fact that there was an earthquake in progress. All right, I was getting ready to record the World Series, and. The first thing, there were some tremors, which didn't seem unusually strong. It just seemed like a regular kind of earthquake. Then the signal went off the air, and then uh, the whole building shook extremely violently. It was going back and forth and up and down, and this, I would think, for about five or six seconds. I haven't seconds. talked to you any time, Ted. And I went to a doorway and stayed there. We have had some minor damage uh, around the building. There are cracks in the plaster. We lost a plate glass window out of the bureau on the other side of the building, and... Uh, there were bricks kicked up, about six or eight of them, uh, from right in front of the entrance here, KGO. Let me just interrupt you for a moment. You were looking, uh, while Bruce Hall was talking, our audience was looking, Bruce, at some live video that was apparently being shot from a helicopter, and it looked as though one of the major highways there was rather severely buckled. Uh, we are getting preliminary information from Candlestick Park, but perhaps it's best to go to my colleague, uh, Mark Nelson, who is out at Candlestick, What's happening at the moment, Mark? Well, Ted, um, people are milling around inside the stadium. The field is empty. None of the players are out. There are nine towers that light the stadium. Um, from my vantage point, I only see one row on one of the towers 
that appears to have any power. Outside, where all the trailers, the television trucks are, um, engineers are frantically trying to hook up um, uh, power, auxiliary power. Um, I can tell you that in the trailer I'm sitting in now, there is none. I'm on one of three working phones. When the tremor hit, and it was a, a, a pretty wild, violent tremor, it lasted for maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Um, people started screaming and running, um, and uh, there, there was a great deal of confusion. That's about all I can tell you right now. All right, Mark. I'll tell you what, let's move on, and we are sort of moving in and out with different colleagues of ours as we become uh, aware of the fact that we're able to communicate with them either by phone. I am told that we can get, I hope, both sound and picture from Rick Lozano of KBC Sports. Uh, Rick, can you hear me? I sure can, Ted. And you are there with uh, San Francisco police officer? Yes, we have uh, Officer Dwayne Collins with us. And uh, first, I should tell you that we just established audio contact with you very recently, so I haven't been able to hear all that you've uh, said so far, Ted. I can tell you that uh, part of the San Francisco Bay Bridge, the Bay Bridge has uh, collapsed in a certain section. Uh, unconfirmed reports of injury at this time. Here at Candlestick Park, as soon as the tremor struck, uh, people started uh, heading for the exits. It was a wild scene here for, for a short time. Uh, personally, I was in a, in a, a hallway, uh, an enclosed hallway, and it was, it was quite a scene in there, something I've never experienced before. With me, Officer Dwayne Collins of the San Francisco Police Department. Uh, Officer, what can you tell us at this time from an official standpoint? Well, nothing in an official standpoint. Everything is still very sketchy. They're still trying to find out what happened. We do know that there was a collapse on the Bay Bridge, and we do have unconfirmed reports that some buildings have collapsed on the south side of Market Street. What about here at Candlestick Park? Uh, any reports of injuries or structural damage to the stadium? No uh, reports of injuries at this point. There's a few shaken up people, obviously. And as far as visible injury, we are visible damage to the stadium. We haven't found any. Living in San Francisco in the Bay Area, you're accustomed to, to earth tremors. How strong would you estimate this one to have been? This was a good, uh, pretty good shaker. It was well over five, probably six. Ted, I can tell you, uh, living in Southern California and Los Angeles, that it, uh, this one measured at least as strong as the Whittier quake of a couple of years ago. Um, the epicenter has not yet been pinpointed, although it did not take very long for the main thrust of the jolt to hit here. So I would imagine that uh, the epicenter was quite nearby. That's well, going to do it for now, Ted. We'll throw it back to you in New York. Rick, thanks very much. Uh, you're both uh, pretty good at guesstimating your, uh, your Richter scale because we now have some preliminary indications that the Richter reading was actually of 6.5. So this was a fairly hefty, indeed a very hefty earthquake. Uh, and I am told that we have some street scenes from San Francisco. Uh, if we have those ready, uh, let's take a look at them right now. We are looking at these for the first time uh, as you see them. to this area, so was Fern's phone service. We're told now that some phone store service has been restored here. You can see people were screaming. You could definitely feel the quake. I was also just told by a police officer that there are some cracks in the upper rim of candlestick. Half inch cracks is what he is saying in the upper rim of candlestick. And they have also closed the overpass now on Jamestown into candlestick. All right, I must tell you that uh, among the things that is happening here is that we are getting snatches of information from different parts of town, and it's like the old uh, legend of the blind men touching the elephant. Depending on which part of the animal they are touching, they are describing different scenes. You can see, on the one hand, people there in the street scenes uh, almost in a festive mood, but I must tell you this was a serious earthquake. There has been serious damage. If you've been with us for the past few minutes, you will have seen that the upper span of the Bay Bridge, at least a significant segment of it, collapsed. There are reports of buildings having collapsed in San Francisco. We have seen, and as I say, if you've been with us, you have seen, uh, some rather significant fires that apparently have been caused by the earthquake. As for injuries or possibly even fatalities, uh, I mentioned to you earlier that there were some initial reports of some injuries at Candlestick Park, and you probably just heard the voice of a uh, uh, KGO reporter who was talking about some cracks in the uh, superstructure at Candlestick Park. 
I must tell you, however, that uh, I have a piece of wire copy here which is saying that a giant spokesman said police were advising fans to remain at Candlestick Park precisely because the park is considered to be structurally sound. So just to summarize for you, and uh, we are trying to make contact with my ABC sports colleague Al Michaels, who was obviously in the park to uh, report on the third game of the World Series, uh, but who is now there to report on a rather significant news story. Uh, let me just bring you up to speed again. Just as the game was about to begin, there was a, an earthquake that apparently lasted about 15 seconds and was felt as far away as 90 miles. There is a piece of videotape that was recorded, uh, oh, I guess about a half hour ago or so, and you can see that there is a segment of the upper span of the Bay Bridge, that is the bridge that connects Oakland, California with San Francisco. There is a segment of that bridge that has collapsed. We have reports of a number of buildings that have collapsed in and around the San Francisco area. And quite frankly, what we are doing at the moment is just trying to gather that information so that we can put it into some kind of coherent form for you. I should point out uh, that until we do that, all I can give you is sort of the same summary that I've been giving you until now. I don't see any particular point in babbling on here and just telling you what's going on uh, until we get some more information. So let's close it up now. A 6.5 reading on the Richter scale. You can see some video there. I gather that's live video of Candlestick Park. And we, we are feeling a shock right now. And that shaking in your picture is being amplified by the uh, tremor that has just gone through the top of the stadium. And we are live. They're taking the bases off. Uh, 841 Eastern, 541. And we just felt it out here. We're at ground level. And now 6.5 Richter is what ABC is reporting this shock to be. Um, and it is quite obvious now, quite obvious that this is not a, it never has been a baseball story. It is much larger than the events going on at Canada. All right. What you saw uh, is self-explanatory. The, uh, the game has clearly been delayed, if not called off the evening. We'll tell you uh, that clearly, given the context of everything else that's happening here tonight, is one of the lesser aspects of the story. But you can see the crack in the, in the sidewalk there. Um, again, a rather massive earthquake, 6.5 on the Richter scale, fires in San Francisco, a segment of the Bay Bridge down, the game delayed, deferred, uh, possibly even canceled, and we will give you more information as soon as it becomes available to us and we can put it into some sort of coherent form. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. We'll be back a little bit later. This special report came to you from ABC News. We now resume our regular program schedule. Hold on. Appears one of the, the people who was uh, at the, the stadium and uh, was forced to leave uh, inquiring as to whether or not uh, uh, the game would go on tonight while others, uh, us included, are concerned about what may have happened in San Francisco, Oakland and in Barnes around. Bonnie Gann in our, in our San Francisco uh, Bureau. Uh, Bonnie? Hi. Can you bring it? What, what's happening there? Well, I just heard over the radio, which is the only way I've been hearing information since all our electricity is off um, here in the San Francisco Bureau on the ninth floor in a skyscraper in downtown San Francisco. I just heard that they are putting this at a 6.9 preliminarily. That was off uh, a local radio station here that was quoted by the Office of Emergency Services. Um, also in those reports of the Bay Bridge having structural damage, um, I've been, KCBS is reporting that parts of it, as you had said earlier, have collapsed. Repar um, there were reports that 20 or 25 cars have been, are seen, I guess, from helicopters that have been over overturned in certain areas of the bridge and on ramps of the bridge. Um, traffic is reported to be tied up everywhere. Um, the quake obviously has been felt all over Northern California. Um, and there were reports I heard earlier of smoke plumes, um, at least of a caller who had called uh, the radio station from Oakland. I am looking out the window. I don't see anything like that. Um, but I mean, it's very quiet where I am because all the uh, lights are off. And, and I can hear that the building, they wanted everybody to leave by stairwells, and that's the last I heard. Bonnie, uh, 6.9, can you put that in some kind of perspective for us? How strong is that? Well, well, uh, 
it's certainly the strongest I think a lot of people in this area have felt. Um, and listening to people who have called the radio station that say they've lived here for 30, 35 years or so, it uh, is the biggest they've ever felt. Certainly um, uh, the biggest I've ever come close to feeling. It was very, very scary. In fact, my knees are still shaking. Um, it went on for a long time, it seemed. And I got under my desk, and I just waited. And just about four minutes ago, we had another aftershock. And uh, that was kind of, it just rolled a bit, but it still makes your heart jump quite a bit. I can imagine, Bonnie, you, you sound, I can hear the shakiness in your voice. Oh, well, well that's true. Stay in touch with us. We'll, we'll probably be back to you. Thanks. Here's Susan. Ray Kolvik, Public Information Officer, I believe we're, you're with UCLA, is that correct? No, I'm at the University of California at Berkeley. Okay, what can you tell us? Well, we just got a report from our seismographic station, very preliminary here. Uh, they indicate that the epicenter of the earthquake is approximately 10 miles northeast of Santa Cruz, California, which would place it probably on the San Andreas Fault. The time of the earthquake was at 5.04. They are giving a very preliminary reading on the Richter scale of 6.2. We are hearing that other seismographic stations are reporting a slightly higher Richter reading. Those will be worked out as they continue their scientific calculations. What about aftershocks? We've had reports of at least two mild aftershocks. We've heard of one. We have not felt one here in Berkeley. We felt only the one strong shock so far uh, that you could tell when you're in a building, as we are. Uh, but we've heard that there is an aftershock felt at Santa Cruz. We heard from one of our colleagues there, but we don't have the uh, report from our seismographic station, which is across campus yet on that. Given that this is on the San Andreas Fault, could that mean that the aftershocks might be more severe? Well, that's a question that could only be answered once we know. Uh, usually aftershocks are less severe, but there have been earthquakes some recently where the aftershocks actually increased or were equal in magnitude. So one never knows until things settle down whether uh, an earthquake is essentially a one event uh, occurrence or whether it might be a multiple series. You're saying a 6.2 on the Richter scale is a preliminary reading. We've That's also a preliminary had... reading from the University of California Seismograph here in Berkeley, which has uh, satellite stations around the state. So once they've done all their readings, they will have a very exact figure. This is very preliminary. What kind of damage could a quake that big cause? Well, it depends on where it occurs. Uh, the, this is a strong earthquake, although it's not in the catastrophic level. For example, the San Francisco earthquake in 1906 was over 8 on the Richter scale. Uh, but in a populated area, we already know from reports coming in on the, uh, from various news sources that there has been some rather severe damage in parts of the Bay Area. We have a large fire burning in the city of Berkeley near the campus here. I don't know what it is, but there's a huge plume of smoke coming up. Uh, we don't think that there's any serious damage on our campus. We've had reports of minor damage, but uh, our buildings seem to have survived in good shape. All right, Ray Kolvik, University of California at Berkeley. Thank you very much. Lou? We're going to go back to our busy bureau. All right, we're going to KTVU. Is this an Oakland uh, live picture from KTVU, an Oakland television station? We're not getting the... From those areas if you can, or if you're in those areas, might be a good idea to leave for the time being. The Office of Emergency Services says San Benito County, Santa Clara County reports of major damage. And, uh, Coming up here, Mac, on, on this tape uh, in just a minute, uh, we will hear from an eyewitness. Well, now look at this. this that whole of section of the building That's has right. fallen. That's right. That just uh, completely collapsed, really, during the earthquake. Which, which building? Did you identify it? Or? I don't know what the name of the building it's is. It's one of the older the building buildings. It's an older building, and it's right at the corner of its own California at Battery. Here's the eyewitness. All right, let me get your name and the spelling. It's John Earthly, E-A-R-T-H-Y. I was standing by the window. All right, this is part of the uh, coverage going out in California. That's KTVU, the Oakland television station, uh, getting their coverage prepared. We're going to shoot back to our busy San Francisco bureau, as I mentioned. Uh, John McManus is on the line. John, you have something more for us? Well, since we spoke with you last, Lou, we have walked a couple more blocks of the downtown section. We see uh, more brick fronts of buildings collapsed in the financial district. Um, electricity is out. We've been told by people who are writing the uh, the BART system, which is the subway system, 
linking San Francisco with the East Bay, that the system has come to a stop. Uh, that was as of a few minutes ago. I assume that is still the case. Uh, trains on the BART system run from San Francisco to Oakland underneath the bay. Mm -hmm. uh, don't know what the status of those folks are. In San Francisco, we're looking at the ferry building from where I'm standing right now, and uh, it's a building that survived the 1906 earthquake. The flagpole on top of the building, interestingly enough, has broken and fallen over. Uh, there is mass traffic jams all throughout the area since the uh, electricity is out and the traffic signals are not working. We have seen fire engines going by, oddly enough, with Giants banners on them. And um, that's what I can tell you now. John, we have, uh, the Wire is reporting a major fire in downtown San Francisco. Are you seeing it? I don't see it from where I'm at. I am at the water's edge at the Embarcadero. That's the eastern section of San Francisco. I do not see that from where I'm at. Oh, you're not even at the Bureau then? I am a couple of blocks from the Bureau right now. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll get back to you, uh, John. Thank you. Uh, we have a report that Highway 101 uh, which, if you're familiar with California, is the main north-south freeway. We have a report that is broken up and sections of the elevated uh, highway have collapsed. Again, our major breaking story, a major earthquake in the San Francisco area. We have uh, that report of a fire in downtown San Francisco. We're unable to get a handle on that right now. As you know, power is out, telephones are out in most areas of the city. We're able to bring you some of our reports by an emergency backup telephone system. We have a report of uh, between a six and seven on the Richter scale. These are preliminary numbers of the intensity of the earthquake in San Francisco. Now, it could, should be pointed out that the major earthquake of 1906 was over eight on the Richter scale. So this is still far below uh, the intensity of that major earthquake of San Francisco. But this one is strong enough to have caused uh, several bits of damage. We've shown you quick pictures of some of the crumbling sides of buildings. We also have this report of a major collapse and I report uh, major in the sense that uh, part of the Bay Bridge, the upper tier of the Bay Bridge, which is the main two-tier bridge between San Francisco and East Bay, has collapsed onto the bottom tier. We have reports of several cars, maybe 20 to 25 cars, being trapped in that tangle. This is Candlestick Park, uh, as I report to you these facts. Candlestick Park uh, lost power about a half hour before the start of tonight's third World Series game. Uh, some of the sections were, were evacuated out of fear of aftershocks. Uh, they're not real excited. Uh, I, I, we asked uh, Dave Henderson there a moment ago if he wanted to tell us what would happen. He said he would rather not talk at this moment. We would like to get ourselves a player here to talk about what they were told <laughs> by the manager but all we can say right now is that there is mass confusion around hear here. Everybody is just walking right out. We hear uh, no sirens for police. There are no ambulances out. As far as we know, no one was hurt. And with the er earthquake that we had here earlier, and from the things that happened to the stadium, I am really surprised that uh, no one was hurt. Uh, hopefully we can get uh, somebody here to tell us exactly what is going to happen. Uh, I'm sure that we're going to have a ball game tomorrow, but uh, I don't think... Did, did they tell you anything about whether we were going to have a game tomorrow or what? We have no idea right now. But um, this game has been suspended, and they told you to go ahead and go home. The only thing we heard that uh, there's a chance we would play them in Oakland. Oh, well, it could in Oakland. Structural, structural damage or something to the stadium. Oh, well, that, that certainly makes sense. That if there's no damage over in the Oakland Coliseum, that they could play the games over, here, over there that, rather than here. Uh, what did, what did they tell you inside? Did they, uh, Not did they a whole lot, home? except just to get out. The game's been postponed, you know, as far as we know. I guess a power failure and some structural damage to the stadium. But, you know, other than that, they just said go home, and I guess we'll find out later. Did you hear the report that uh, they may now have to play the rest of the games at the Oakland Coliseum? Well, I haven't heard in one way or the other. You know, I'm just a little shook up by the whole thing. You know, inside the clubhouse, it was shaking pretty bad. You know, we had to get out, and, you know, and then my concern was my family. All right, when you first felt it, did you know That's Gene Nelson of the Oakland A's. You heard the report of structural damage to Candlestick Park, according to, according to uh, one of the players. The lights went out, you know, and the dust started falling, and it looked like the pillars inside were shaking pretty bad, so we decided that everybody would get out, so we all just came out, and, you know, from there everything settled down, and we didn't know what was going to happen. Okay, thank you very much, and hopefully the game will be...
That was Nelson, the pitcher for uh, the Oakland A's. Okay, we'll send it back to you, uh, Margaret. All right, Margaret is a KTVU person. Uh, we are picking up uh, bits and pieces of everything we can get our hands on to more accurately and fully report this story to you. I was telling you the Bay Bridge story, one of the last reports we have about the Bay Bridge collapse, the upper tier collapsing onto the lower tier, is that several people have been spotted in the water. We do not have a report if those people are dead or injured, but we do have a major collapse of the Bay Bridge in addition to all the other things that are happening in the uh, Bay Area and points south and east in an earthquake felt at 5.04 Pacific time, which is almost an hour ago now, a quake felt as far away as Los Angeles. It lasted for 15 seconds. Preliminary reports between 6 and 7 on the Richter scale. We're continuing to collect information. We'll continue our reporting to you. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Good morning, everybody. Good morning! Amy, I hear your new teacher's real mean. Amy, would you come up here and bring your picture with you, please? Uh -oh. Mean trouble. Look at the picture. There's a special power that can bring students and teachers closer together. The power to be your best. Hey, how's your new teacher? Oh, she's okay. Hello, Tim Conway here to Conway Lodge with memory expert, Dr. Scatterly. Yes, you know, Jim, uh, uh, Tim. I travel all over the country teaching my... Your uh, memory course, Doc. And I love that wonderful, uh, unforgettable, what call it, number. Mm. Reservations number... Who could forget 1-800-55-ACONO? That's it. Plus, everybody's so friendly. Why, Cheryl there at the desk always remembers me. Shirley. Say, would you like to stop in for a moment? Uh, no. Uh, we, uh... <coughs> oh! I could have swore that was my... Girl. Call now and you can have 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and this valuable 120-page Guide to Understanding Money and Markets. That's 13 weeks of the journal for the news and ideas you need every business day. And this guide free, which tells you everything you want to know about money and markets. Now for only $34. Call toll-free 800-638-9600. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-638-9600 now. The best journalists in the business are working on it. Bureaus from Beijing to Washington are preparing for it. And when you see it, you'll agree the others don't even come close. The World Today, weeknights on CNN. Stored. This is a CNN special report. Our breaking story, a major earthquake in San Francisco. I'm going to take about 40 seconds here and run down a list of what we know, the reports we're getting. A major earthquake registering between 6 and 7 on the Richter scale in the Bay Area. San Francisco has been hit hard in some places, minor damage in other places. We have a report of structural damage, Candlestick Park. Game 3 of the World Series has been canceled. Emergency vehicles are running in San Francisco. Willis Jacobs of the National Earthquake Center is on the line. Sir, are you there? Yes, I am. What can you tell us about this quake? The earthquake occurred at 5.04 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time today. The magnitude is 6.9 on the Richter scale. And uh, it's our location puts it in the Santa Cruz area, the epicenter. That's the extent of the information that we have now. All right, sir, thank you. We're going to go to uh, Candlestick Park. Green chicks will be on Earth. Gary Miller is there. Gary, can you hear yes. me? Yes, I hear you, Lowe. Uh, okay, Gary, take over. Well, I'm standing outside Candlestick Park with uh, some of the fans who have gathered out here. They've evacuated Candlestick Park and officially called off Game 3 of the World Series. The scene here was one of uh, tremendous fear initially. It wasn't sure for those of us that are from the Midwest or areas outside of California, wasn't sure what was going on at first. But when the whole stadium shook several feet one way and then the other, it was pretty evident what was going on. Then it was just a situation of waiting to see what would happen, if they would play the game here and what would go on. The power is still out here at Candlestick Park, and the players have all been uh, notified that they can leave and wait for further word mm -hmm. as to the resumption of this World Series. Gary, what was the reaction uh, of uh, the, the crowd? Uh, the power was knocked out, so obviously they couldn't be told one way or another what to do or what happened. 
That's right. Uh, initially, I do believe I heard an announcement that, which said that the upper people in the upper deck should head for the exits. As we were doing that, the ushers told us, go back, take your seats, and wait. So for about the next half hour or so, most of the stadium remained full. In fact, on our way out here, there were still people filing into the stadium. There's a lot of them gathered around here now as they head out back to uh, see when these Game 3 tickets will be ready to go for a baseball game. But it really was, there was no panic. There was uh, some nervous laughter, but it really was a controlled crowd situation. And I guess people out here are kind of used to this sort of thing, but it was very unusual to be in a situation where you had 45,000 of your neighbors sitting around next to you, usually you're maybe in your bedroom or eating breakfast or something, not in a packed Gary, stadium. Gary, uh, you say hits. folks out there are used to this sort of thing. Why don't you grab that fellow in the red hat to your left and ask him what he thinks about this? Well, have you got some experience with earthquakes? You look like you've uh, been around. Are you a native Californian? No, no, I'm from Chicago. I am but too. I, now, what was your reaction to what happened in the stadium tonight? I was scared. I was scared. I've been here 32 years. It's the first time I felt an earthquake. Are you a native Californian? Yeah, I've been, I've been in here all my life, and uh, I felt the earthquake, and I looked up, and I saw the uh, standard shaking, and I was thinking, well, it's just another earthquake. Let's go watch the ball game. Hey, no problem. You know, California, I'm used to it, and uh, go up there, and they once I saw them take the balloons out of there, it was all over. We how, would the, how would this compare to other earthquakes well, you've been you know, we were standing underneath the standards, and... Uh, Going from side to side, it was. I've been through a six-one and a five-five, and I'm sure the people upstairs were feeling a lot worse. What's the initial reaction if you've gone through an earthquake before? Those of us that haven't thought maybe this was the end of our lives. I hey, mean, <laughs> it's scary. I, I'll tell you, my heart was thumping pretty good. We have any other native Californians here? And born and raised. Come on up here, sir. Now, if you've been through earthquakes before, does this become old hat, or how much different does it make it when you're in there with 45,000 other people? That was different. That was different. I've been through a lot of them. The worst one, I think, was in 1957 when I was six years old. My whole room was falling down around me, so I was a little scared that normally they don't bother me, but uh, this was a little different. What's the situation as far as your family? I imagine, you know, you can't get everyone in there on a ticket to the World Series. Have you got concerns about other relatives and close friends in the area? I think the area that they live in and where they live is okay. Uh, they're, they're not downtown today, so I think it's okay. I, and around high rises and, and, and structures that are way above you, I think maybe there's some concern. But uh, where my sister and her family live is not too bad. What was the situation in the park? You know, I know people waited a long time. We came out about a half an hour ago. What made you finally decide to leave? Or how, what was the situation when people finally evacuated and they called it off? When it first started to happen, I thought either they were booing the A's or cheering the Giants. I couldn't tell which. But then uh, you, you knew that something was going wrong when you saw the, uh, the upper structure just shaking like I've never seen anything shake before in my life. And like this guy over here said, six ones and five fives, those are fine, and you deal with those. But this was like six nine, I understand. And I think it was just basically a question when you saw the lights go out and the players starting to head for the ballpark, you knew they weren't going to play. So it's time, time to go home at that time. Well, that's the situation here at Candlestick Park with Game 3 of the World Series. The epicenter was at Hollister, California, 6.9. We'll continue to be here at Candlestick Park. Right now, let's go back to Atlanta. All right, Gary, 6.9 is uh, what the official sources, uh, those people who watch uh, earthquakes, are reporting this evening. 6.9 on the Richter scale. This all happened at 5.04 Pacific time. Uh, parts of uh, San Francisco reporting uh, major damage. Uh, other parts reporting uh, grocery stores, for instance, uh, all, all uh, items knocked off the, the shelves, that kind of damage. The uh, major damage story we're reporting is uh, that to the Bay Bridge. Television crews flying over the bridge report a major old structural collapse, the top tier onto the bottom tier. The account uh, of cars and trucks involved about 25 is uh, the most accurate number we're able to get. Most of them have either been crushed or overturned. Uh, people have been spotted. These are pictures from Candlestick Park where Game 3 was canceled, where many of those cars may have been headed tonight over the Bay Bridge. Uh, the people spotted in the water, it has not been confirmed whether those people um, are dead or injured. Other major damage is to Highway 101, which is the main north-south freeway. We have reports that the freeway is broken up and sections of the elevated highway have collapsed. We have reports of gas leaking in San Francisco. Emergency vehicles are out. And uh, we are continuing to collect information. We have another report have here. The San Jose Airport, which is for San Francisco-bound traffic, and there's possible cars in the water. 
At this time, the Golden Gate Bridge is still open. What's the situation here as far as uh, 60,000 fans are canceled? Well, there's a possible cancellation of the game at this time. Thanks. Thank All right, there's a uh, further report on our Bay Bridge story. Uh, many of those television stations which we are getting our reports through are unable to broadcast because uh, major uh, portions of power out in certain portions of the city. We did get some pictures earlier from KTVU in Oakland, California. So some parts of the city are unaffected by this quake or affected in a much more minor way. What I was going to say about the San Jose airport is uh, that they're telling, that, telling us that all their runways are open, if that matters to you. Again, uh, in relation to the 1906 quake, which is the major San Francisco earthquake, which registered over eight. I think everybody can leave in a graceful fashion. Please leave. The game has been postponed. There'll be no baseball tonight. Thank you. I'll get that out to the truck right now. We'll put it on the air. All right. We're still out at the stadium picking up reaction from there. Game three of the World Series has been canceled. See the players and their wives leaving. This is unedited tape. Uh, we are watching it right out of the camera at the same time you are. These are the pictures that were captured by photographers out at the park just moments ago. They're being fed to us by satellite. We're just putting them right on the air so as not to miss any part of the story. It didn't look real promising. Oh, it'll be a horrible way to uh, get your first start. Well, uh, the start's not as important as something like this. What so, went through your mind? I mean, can you, can you describe it? I was what sit happened with your teammates? I was sitting on a bench, and all of a sudden I saw the ground shaking, and I made a mad dash to the middle of the field. And, uh, some guys said they were out here running, getting loose, and about knocked them over. It was just uh, freaky. Like everybody else in this place, did you get the uh, oh, yeah, adrenaline oh, yeah. shakes, and are they still? Uh, I'm sure. It's still, you know, it's still a little spooky, but... Uh, they can't play this game, huh? No, I don't see it. I don't see that happening. No, they just said... The commissioner just said no. All right, that game three of the World Series has been canceled. We heard one report that they might continue the series only in Oakland. We have another report that the bridges in the uh, Bay Area have been closed. That's going to cause an incredible crunch in the Bay Area tonight. Some of these folks... There has been a power failure, therefore the game will be postponed. We ask that you hold on to your tickets. Rain checks will be honored. As you leave in an orderly fashion, please turn your radios on to KNBR 68 or KGO 81. Rain checks will be honored. We have a power failure, therefore the game will be postponed. We ask that you leave in an orderly fashion. Thank you. That's the scene at Candlestick Park as the fans learned of the cancellation of the game. We were talking about this uh, bridges in the San Francisco area closed. Uh, we don't know if all of them have been closed. Do we know that? San Rafael Bridge also? All right. The report is, and it's unconfirmed, that all bridges in the Bay Area have been closed. Now, if you're familiar with the Bay Area, you know you can't get from place to place to place without those bridges. That would include the Golden Gate, San Rafael Bridge, the Bay Bridge, uh, which, of course, as uh, we have been reporting, is uh, under major stress tonight. It has collapsed in part, part of the upper tier. Last year in L.A. it was pretty bad, but uh, this is, uh, I guess you would call it more... Part of the upper tier... Uh, has collapsed under the lower tier. Uh, what we have are reports from television crews flying over the Bay Bridge and the reports of the uh, traffic caught in that uh, tangle of steel and bodies in the water. We are continuing to follow this story. We're collecting tape. We're collecting information. We'll take a break, and this CNN special report on the quake in San Francisco will continue in just a moment. Go sitting at the head of the peninsula. Oakland would be uh, just to the right of San Francisco across the bay. And uh, again, we here in the truck do not have uh, any further information in terms of magnitude and the exact epicenter. There are some fires, obviously, in uh, the city of San Francisco. Again, as we take a look at that, uh, that appears to be what uh, would be the marina district uh, not far from Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, at 5.04 Pacific time, we understand was when the earthquake occurred. 
And uh, we at that point, of course, were, were coming on the air, getting ready to begin our telecast of the third game of the World Series. And again, at Candlestick Park, there was no panic. Uh, Californians uh, sort of react with uh, wryness, I suppose, and, uh, and irony, and you, you kind of give each other a knowing shrug. Hey, we know what's happened. And then, as I say, the reality has really begun to sunk in. Meanwhile, Joe Morgan was down on the field. We were preparing to lead to a Joe Morgan interview. Next to Joe was Willie Mays, and uh, Tim McCarver and I and Jim Palmer were in the, the booth, and there it was at that particular point. And as we said, uh, or as we said before in the in the booth here was here was us uh, here here we were at that uh, particular point my grammar is not particularly terrific at this point but I think you'll all understand well uh, I was watching thinking that they were just replaying a tape of what happened but clearly what uh, what has been happening all evening long has just happened again you heard Al Michaels there have been electrical uh, breakups all evening long. The key part of the story is by now, I'm sure you will have gathered, is that there has been a rather major earthquake in San Francisco ranging somewhere between 6.5 and 7 on the Richter scale. You see one of the fires that uh, we assume has been caused by the tremors uh, one of my colleagues here, our political director, Hal Bruno, who is also a volunteer fireman, tells me that what frequently happens is that these fires are a consequence of ruptured gas lines. So there you see a fire blazing with what I believe is the Golden Gate Bridge directly behind, but it is the other bridge, the Bay Bridge, that Al Michael was talking about just a moment ago, uh, where a 30 to 50 puts a foot span of the upper level has collapsed onto the lower level. And of course, among the other things that will have happened this evening, as all the fans from Oakland who came over to the San Francisco side to see the third game of the World Series, which parenthetically has of course been canceled now by the commissioner of baseball, Faye Vincent, uh, all those people somehow have to get back to Oakland. They won't be going back over the Bay Bridge. Uh, as you have seen uh, over the course of the past few minutes, and there you see a span of highway that has also collapsed. No indication, uh, parenthetically, of whether there have been any injuries or fatalities. Um, you can tell uh, an, an earthquake uh, is such a random thing. You see people there standing around uh, in an almost joking fashion. Uh, I guess relief as much as anything else, uh, but only a few miles and in some instances even a few hundred yards away, there may be people who have been badly injured by that same quake. And what we're looking at there is, I believe, a span, that segment that I was telling you about, the cantilevered segment of the Bay Bridge that Al Michaels was talking about a few moments ago, it collapsed, and because it collapsed, the upper level collapsed onto the lower level, clearly that bridge can no longer be used to connect San Francisco with Oakland. So the folks who went to see the game in San Francisco today won't be able to go back via the bridge, and there have been other reports, unconfirmed as yet, that uh, BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit, that is the uh, uh, partially underground subway uh, segment, that there has been at least one train that has been stalled in one of those tunnels. So I suspect they may be very, very cautious now in terms of allowing more passengers in there. Now, a couple of my colleagues, uh, Bruce Hall and Mark Nelson, are standing by by phone. Uh, Mark, you're still out, uh, I gather, at the ballpark. Anything new that you can tell us from out there? Uh, we, we hear you rather faintly, and if, if we don't hear you any more clearly than that, go ahead, Mark Nelson. Can you hear me? Mark Nelson? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, there, there's um, power failures again in various parts of the, of the park area that I'm near. People are filing out. It, it, it appears to be very orderly. There are buses around. People are, are loading buses, and they're... Um, they're leaving the, the park area. Um, it appears to me most of the television uh, trailers and foreign broadcast trailers that are around here um, have all lost power as well. Um, from what I can see, there appears to be no lights on the towers inside the stadium. That's about all I can tell you right now, Ted. Uh, Mark, since you uh, are living in San Francisco, maybe you can fill in what I was trying to explain to our viewers a moment ago, and that is how do the people who are now on the San Francisco side of the bay, how do they get over to the Oakland side, since clearly they cannot take the Bay Bridge? 
Well, Ted, I don't live in San Francisco. I live in Los Angeles, and I'm uh, interested to find that out myself. All right. Well, how about Bruce Hall? Bruce, you're, you're standing by also on the phone. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, the normal alternate route would probably be the San Mateo Bridge, which is the bridge just south of the Bay Bridge, but that has been closed for inspection, according to KGO. They're, they are inspecting it for damage. There's not known damage as of a few minutes ago. But that bridge has been closed, which leaves the Dunbarton Bridge, which is a very small bridge, uh, several miles farther south. It takes off from Palo Alto. And uh, otherwise, you'd have to drive either the Golden Gate Bridge and the Richmond-San Rafael Bridge or through San Jose and around and up uh, the other shore. But part of 880, which is the road that would come up from San Jose to Oakland, has collapsed. I think it's nearer the Bay Bridge, but I'm not sure. I think that may have been the, the part of the freeway that you showed earlier that it collapsed. Bruce, I'll tell you what, maybe you could just fill us in a little bit on uh, what you know in terms of injuries, possibly even fatalities and damage. We have seen some aerial video of what looked to be some rather serious fires. Do you have any idea of how widespread they are uh, and of whether there have been any casualties? No, I'm sorry, I don't. All right. We're going to go back now to Al Michaels, who is still standing by um, at uh, Candlestick Park. Uh, Al, I assume that you're looking at the same video that I'm seeing right now, which is a terrible fire somewhere uh, in San Francisco. Do you know the area well enough to be able to tell us where that is? Ted, I'm not certain that I'm seeing exactly what you're seeing, but I do see a fire. I know there is a fire in what would be uh, the Marina District or very close to it. It's not far from Fisherman's Wharf. It would be in the uh, the northern section of the city. It appeared to me uh, maybe a half a mile in from, from San Francisco Bay, and that appears to be the most serious of the fires that uh, I'm able to see at this particular point. All right, before you start to brief us all on, on what is happening there right now, let me just point out that President Bush was attending a dinner for Republican governors in Washington this evening when he learned about the earthquake in California. The president told reporters that about an hour from now, the Secretary of Transportation, Skinner, will go to California to make a first hand inspection of the damage. The president also said that uh, officials of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, are being called to the White House tonight to start mapping out assistance plans. Just a few miles to the south of you there, Al, at San Francisco Airport, you should know the airport has been closed. Uh, and I don't know whether that's just while they are waiting to see if there are any more aftershocks or whether they need to, uh, whether they need to conduct an inspection there. But uh, fill us in on the scene now at Candlestick, would you? Well, well right now, everybody appears to be safe and uh, everybody evacuated. It was a, a, a most curious sort of reaction. I, I don't know if uh, we had communication before, Ted. I could not hear you, but... You know, I have lived in this state for 20 years and in this area for 12, so those of us who uh, have experience living through these things knew exactly what it was. Uh, when it stops, uh, there's a tremendous sense of relief. There's a, a wryness and irony and all of that, and you sort of shrug your shoulders and you say, it's really process uh, beginning to settle in about 20 minutes later of what might have been, and I can't tell you how fortunate we were. Upgraded standards in regard to safety for the prevention of earthquakes. Broadcast position is in that mezzanine. I had the sense just for a second or two that we were going backwards and out, and that we were going to go down into the lower deck and the upper. I tell you that uh, uh, it's a, it's been a terrible tragedy, obviously. And obviously, the uh, the portion of that has collapsed and we don't know uh, the casualties but uh, we were very very lucky at candlestick park that the epicenter was not that close to this ballpark which is uh, 31 years old actually al the the epicenter i've just been handed a piece of wire copy the epicenter was about 50 francisco so uh presumably as we uh, as we go on into the evening we'll be getting reports of what's been happening closer to the epicenter but obviously right now uh the focus of attention has been and continues to be the immediate bay area san francisco and the area right around candlestick park we heard um, commissioner of baseball Faye vincent telling gary thorne before uh that the game uh, obviously was canceled for tonight and he'll be making a decision later on as to whether or not uh, the third game of the world series can be played there at Candlestick Park. 
Uh, I, I don't expect you to crystal ball it, Al, but just on the basis of what we have seen here this evening, can you imagine that they can conduct those kinds of inspections in the next 24 hours and have everybody back there in that park tomorrow night? Well, again, drawing on the fact that I've lived here all of these years, yes, they've been able to do those things. I think, you know, you've got other problems here. You've got uh, uh, the psyche of this entire area uh, incredibly affected by this. You're going to have uh, huge, huge traffic jams all over the Bay Area. I mean, it's obvious that the extent of the damage to the collapsed section of the Bay Bridge is sufficient that that bridge is going to be closed for uh, who knows how long. I understand, like I heard an earlier report, Ted, when they were linking me with you, that the San Mateo Bridge uh, is also being closed at least for inspection and so what you would have to do to get from uh, San Francisco to Oakland would be to uh, either drive down to the Dumbarton Bridge which connects Menlo Park and Fremont a very small bridge or drive all the way to San Jose and come back up or uh, proceed to the far North Bay and come back down over the Golden Gate Bridge so uh, you know obviously this is one of the things uh, that people are thinking about in this area the continuation of this World Series uh, when it will take place but I think uh, uppermost in, in most people's minds in this region right now uh, are things of another nature. No, you're exactly right. And I should point out that this earthquake, uh, and, and perhaps we should just tell those people who are tuning in now for the first time and who perhaps thought they were going to catch this game in the third or fourth innings, the, the third game of the World Series has been canceled. What you are looking at right now uh, is the reason why. There has been an earthquake in San Francisco. You're looking at a piece of videotape now uh, of some cars that were trapped when the upper section of the Bay Bridge collapsed onto the lower section of the Bay Bridge. That is the bridge that connects Oakland with San Francisco. The Ted, quake... I, uh, yeah, go ahead. Can you Al. hear me uh, right now? Because uh, just to point something out in case it has not been, this bridge is a double-decker bridge. It is one way from east to west in the direction we are looking right now. In other words, that car was heading from Oakland into San Francisco. And then there is a, the uh, section underneath, which is one way going from uh, San Francisco to Oakland. So I don't have to tell you that in the best of times, that is an incredibly heavily traveled bridge, not just during rush hour, but uh, at, at several points during the day. And uh, you can see in that shot, if you are seeing the same thing I am, Ted, the panoramic shot of San Francisco, that fire appears to be, as I say, in the Pacific Heights or Marina District. You saw the Golden Gate Bridge, and we've not heard any reports in regard to structural damage there, which links Marin County in San Francisco. Panning now, you, Fisherman's Wharf would be at the uh, shoreline there. Uh, there's downtown San Francisco. There is the main portion of the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. That is not the portion uh, at which the collapse has taken place. Yerba Buena Island and Treasure Island is in the middle. And then there is that cantilevered portion and that is where the uh, collapse of the Bay Bridge has taken place, Ted. Now, uh, the fires, we just saw one of the fires over there on the San Francisco side. I should point out that fires have also been reported in Berkeley and in Oakland. So this is clearly an earthquake that has made its effects felt uh, for many, many miles all around. As I mentioned a few moments ago to you, Al, the epicenter is about 50 miles south of San Francisco, but clearly the attention of the world this evening has been focused on San Francisco, and as we get more information uh, later on, our colleague Peter Jennings is sitting up in New York with our San Francisco Bureau Chief Ken Kashiwahara. Maybe the two of them can fill us in a little bit. And again, one of the things, the, the, the subway system, Peter, maybe you could ask Ken, uh, that BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit, how is that going to be affected by this? Well, Ted, uh, by the way, first of all, you and Al Michaels particularly have done a superb job of, we've been listening to you here for half an hour. BART has already been evacuated in some places, Ken. Some people got trapped in tunnels and have moved out. But other than that, it's the same story there. It's been fairly orderly, hasn't it? I think so. Uh, in any kind of an earthquake like this, they would shut down BART uh, protectively and then simply inspect. Um, I haven't heard any reports of any damage on the BART system. There could have been, but, but the stopping of the system is, is, is routine in any event like this. This is uh, something that most Californians uh, living in your neck of the woods expect to happen at some point. You've had about 4,000 of these earthquakes in the last couple of years of a much minor nature. More minor. Well, expecting, I, I'd say this is something we've all feared, yes, and this is the, the, the worst time of the day could possibly have happened. This is what earthquake officials had, had, had feared the most, that is an earthquake happening in the middle of rush hour with uh, thousands and thousands of cars on highways. So, yeah, we live with that fear. And do you also live, as we go back and have a look at some of these aerials that we've been able to see of San Francisco, not much point, I think, in looking at us when we can be looking at San Francisco. Um, do you also have the sense, as citizens of San Francisco, 
that it's going to be happy and that you're going to behave in a certain way? Um, no, I think there's a fear about that, too. Um, we, we've all been told what to do when earthquakes hit, what to expect, and how to behave. But I, I suppose there's always that feeling in the back of our minds that we won't really behave that way. The worst, the worst uh, thing that the officials fear is panic among, among the population. There's so many earthquakes because this is where the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate meet. And I was looking as we were listening to Ted and Al Michaels talk, and as we look again at the Oakland Bay Bridge, that in the three years since the middle of 1986, you've had just over 4,400 earthquakes of some nature. You must never get used to it. Well, but, but don't forget, some of those earthquakes are either further away than this one was, or they are, are um, not as strong, and therefore we don't feel them as much. Uh, yes, we, we have gotten used to feeling the rolling motions, but, but certainly nothing like this. We've had tremendous uh, benefit from having Al Michael, Michael there as well, who grew up, and that's the Marina District of San Francisco, which, as Al has pointed out on a couple of occasions, is not far from Fisherman's Wharf for visitors to California. There's no hard evidence yet that that fire actually began as a result of the earthquake. The epicenter of which you've probably heard already was about 10 miles north of Santa Cruz and 50 miles south of San Francisco. But the information beyond the basics, Ken, has been fairly slow to come in. How well equipped both mentally and physically are the fire department and the police department for this eventuality? I think they were as well equipped gotcha. as they could be. They go through drills every year, earthquake drills, and, and that's the primarily, primary practice, that is to train firefighters and the police department uh, departments into in, in handling something like this, and I might point out when we, as we look at that look at that fire, that's 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 what uh, officials fear the most: the fires. As you may remember, in 1906, when the big earthquake hit San Francisco, 8.3 on the Richter scale, it was. Right? That's what destroyed the city: the fires. The fire, because and now of course it's even enhanced to some extent by the fact that there are gas mains all over the city, and you start gas fires, which are extremely difficult to fight. San Francisco, though, was uh, I'd say fairly well prepared in the sense that 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 buildings over the last number of years have been uh, built to withstand strong earthquakes, and I think that's probably why you don't see even more damage than, than we're hearing about. You have very, very tough city restrictions. We do, and the newer buildings are certainly built to withstand stronger earthquakes than the one that, that hit today. What's the regulation? What, what, what does the city require or the state require that you be prepared to deal with? Well, Just to remind people, the 6.5, uh, there was no Richter scale in 1906. 6.5 on the Richter scale is is classified as a quake which can do very severe damage. Not quite sure what's going on here. All right, Peter. I'll tell you what. Let me uh, let me take it back from you for Good, a moment. Please. And uh, you and I are sitting, parenthetically, you're sitting in New York. I'm sitting in Washington. Fortunately, Al Mike. Fortunately for us, if not for him, Al Michaels is still sitting in San Francisco. Al, where physically are you at Candlestick right now? Uh, right now, Ted, we are in our production truck, which is just outside the ballpark, clear of the overhang. And I think that's very important, too. Uh, one of the things that uh, you're trained to do as a Californian is to make sure there is nothing above you. I know when I am at home and, uh, and I feel that an earthquake is, uh, is in progress, uh, I will normally go outside as quickly as I possibly can and get away from anything that might fall on top of you. And again, I mentioned, uh, you know, the one thing that I think I, I'd like to point out here too, Ted, is that when word began to circulate at the ballpark that the magnitude of this earthquake was in the 6 to 6.9 range, I knew immediately that the epicenter had to be uh, 50, 75, maybe 100 miles from the ballpark. I was remarking about that to Tim McCarver as we were sitting through some of the aftershocks. Because I know uh, when I lived in this region, uh, in, in the city of Menlo Park, one morning I was awakened by uh, what I felt was the big one, as we've all come to expect in California, only to find out that the magnitude of the quake was 3.1, and then to find out the epicenter was a half a mile from my house. So obviously the key is to be as far away from the epicenter as possible to be able to avoid any damage. And all I can say, Ted, is thank God the epicenter was far enough away from Candlestick Park so that this structure remained erect. Yeah, well, of course, that doesn't do a lot, though, for the folks of Santa Cruz. This uh, took place, the epicenter was just 10 miles north of Santa Cruz. Let me, let me just debrief you for a moment, Al, in terms of your uh, expertise as a Californian on earthquakes. 10 miles away, 6.5 to 7 on the Richter scale. Can we infer anything uh, of, of what is likely to have happened in Santa Cruz tonight? Uh, obviously, there has to be major damage. Again, Santa Cruz is a, uh, it's 
not really a, a metropolitan area. It's a lovely little community, and there are other communities that wind their way up through Highway 17 towards San Jose. And then uh, if you would proceed south from Santa Cruz down Highway 1, you'd eventually come to Monterey. So I would suspect, you know, this uh, earthquake was obviously felt all over what is known as the Bay Area. Also, the South Bay as well. And, you know, it's a, uh, an ironic thing that San Jose is now the biggest city in the Bay Area. So uh, there uh, were certainly after effects uh, of, of what took place in the city of San Jose and places like uh, Gilroy and all the way down the coast toward uh, perhaps San Luis Obispo. Now, let's just briefly recapitulate for those members of our audience who may have joined us within the past few minutes. Obviously, the third game of the World Series has been canceled. The commissioner of baseball, Faye Vincent, said he will make a decision sometime tomorrow as to whether or not that third game can be played at Candlestick Park. We are looking live now at, uh, is that a shot from the blimp, Al, or is that a helicopter shot? If you are seeing what I am seeing, that's from the blimp. Are you seeing the Bay Bridge right now, That's Ted? exactly right. That's yes, a blimp that's shot. A, right. That's a blimp shot I, from the cantilevered, uh, again, that's the cantilevered portion of the Bay Bridge, the uh, top half of which has collapsed onto the bottom half. Again, that's the, the top half carries traffic from Oakland into San Francisco and the bottom half from San Francisco back the other way toward the East Bay. All right. As, as you can probably see now, Al, we are looking at videotape that was shot earlier. The reason we're going to that tape, as you will see in just a second, uh, is that you will see very clearly that 30 to 50 foot segment of the upper level of the bridge, which has collapsed onto the lower level of the bridge. Uh, and if it's the piece of videotape that I expect to see, uh, we'll be moving in even closer on that shot. And you will see that there are at least a couple of vehicles that were trapped down there. Uh, hundreds of cars on that lower level. Uh, obviously, they are going nowhere right now unless the police turn them around and get them off the bridge, which I assume they will have done in the past uh, hour and a half since this occurred. There's that vehicle that I was talking about a moment ago. San Francisco Airport has been closed down. That huge fire, and I, I hope that we will be getting a little more information on where that fire is and whether the fire department thinks they're going to get it under control, is just one of several fires blazing not only in San Francisco but also in Oakland and in Berkeley, uh, although there is information uh, that Hal Bruno, our political director, who, as I said earlier, is uh, uh, himself a member of a volunteer fire department. He has been talking to friends and colleagues of his at the Los Angeles Fire Department. They've been monitoring communications with San Francisco. And uh, while Hal reports that there are several fires, all of them are being brought under control. All of them, I would assume, except that one that we have been looking at, which for one reason or another they may be allowing to, uh, to burn itself out. There have been large segments of highway uh, that have buckled. Uh, we have not even preliminary reports right now on any injuries that may have occurred either on the Bay Bridge or on those highways or elsewhere. Al, out at Candlestick, uh, amazingly and thankfully I think uh, you can report nobody hurt. As far as I can tell, Ted, no. Uh, everybody, uh, it was uh, an odd reaction at first. Uh, we all knew what it was. Uh, and yet most of the people remained. And in fact, there was a, a little bit of black humor as well. 15 or 20 minutes later, uh, despite a couple of soft aftershocks, there was a chant of play ball, play ball which quickly dissipated. And then uh, they had no communication here with the crowd. All of the power was gone, so you had no PA uh, system in effect. And then finally, uh, a couple of, uh, I, I take it, security people or officers came out onto the field and with bullhorns announced that uh, people were to evacuate the stadium. But everything, uh, Ted, was extremely orderly. Uh, there was no panic. Uh, it was more of a, a sense of wonderment than anything else. And again, it, it, it really took a little while for it to sink in. Uh, people were sort of uh, wryly uh, laughing or, or making uh, jokes uh, a few minutes after the quake and then as we walked out maybe oh 20 to 25 minutes after the quake hit at 504 uh, there were some stricken looks on the faces of people at that point as the reality of what might have happened set in Al, uh, while you were talking there, I was just being told in my ear that we have a reaction to what is going on right now from uh, both the, uh, the president, President Bush, and from his chief of staff, uh, John Sununu. Yeah, I called the governor's office and got some information there. The governor's out of the country, but we're, we're beginning to get a lot of information in here, and uh, obviously the federal government will do everything that possibly can to help, but at this point we're just investing. Oh, you've got the latest report, Just the 
governor's office said they had some information on some uh, scattered fires. No confirmation exactly what the specific damage to the bridge was, although there is some damage that has warranted the closing of the bridge. There seems to be power out at the airport uh, in some of the major uh, components of the airport. So the airport is either operating at a very low level or shut down. It, it may be shut down. You may want this delay. They just course, handed me a report if you want to take a look at that. Uh, well, I don't know about tonight, but the team will be operating, working here to uh, see how we can assist. Nothing different than what I've just said. Uh, all right, that was uh, President Bush, of course, and uh, White House Chief of Staff Sununu. Here we have one of these curious situations, Al Michaels, that uh, I know you're familiar with. In an instance like this, where quite literally, sometimes the government is getting its information of what's happening from us, we're watching on television and trying to hear from them what's going on. This is one of those instances where I think we're a little bit ahead of what the White House has, because indeed the uh, airport at San Francisco has been closed down. Uh, the bridge, the damage that uh, the president was referring to, is damage that uh, you at home have been seeing and we have been reporting on uh, now for the better part of an hour and a half. Uh, and indeed, uh, the, uh, the only information we are not able to bring you at this point, because obviously all the emergency personnel in San Francisco are dealing with the crisis at the moment, uh, and uh, we are not yet getting very good reporting on what, if any, casualties there have been. Uh, and once again, Al, do you recognize that segment of San Francisco? That, that is a, a fairly enormous fire, which seems to have consumed at least a block. Yes, Ted. As a matter of fact, as we have zoomed in here, assuming you're seeing the same thing I am seeing, uh, we would be looking west, uh, and as we pull back now, you will see eventually the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, which spans San Francisco and Marin County. That is, as I say, in um, the Marina Pacific Heights area. Uh, it's a, a few blocks from Fisherman's Wharf. In fact, as you can see there, it's uh, about two or three blocks from the marina with Fisherman's Wharf more toward the foreground at this particular point. I would say, uh, I know the city fairly well. I can't tell you exactly what is being consumed right there, but generally that is a, uh, a residential area with uh, some small stores scattered here and there, maybe a mom and pop type convenience uh, store or whatever, but obviously the entire block or more than that is being consumed right now. And what appears to be, very fortunately, the, the only major fire that we're able to see from our blimp and helicopter coverage from San Francisco. Yeah, it's it, it's the only one we can see, but I must tell you, Al, apparently it is not the only one that is blazing right now. We have uh, reports of a major fire in an area near the library at the University of California in Berkeley, uh, and the Associated Press is reporting now that it has an unconfirmed report of a shopping mall that has collapsed in San Jose. Now, San Jose is how many miles to the south of San Francisco? San Jose would be uh, roughly 45 miles to the south, and as we mentioned before, for uh, Ted, uh, San Jose would be far closer to the epicenter than San Francisco. The epicenter is near Santa Cruz. Uh, you can drive from Santa Cruz to San Jose in uh, well, probably 25 to 30 minutes time. Uh, we mentioned before it's a it's a huge area. In fact, it's uh, more of the geographical and population center of the Bay Area than than San Francisco. It's uh, a part of Silicon Valley. It's uh, been uh, tremendously developed and the population has uh, doubled and tripled uh, in recent years. And uh, as I suspected before, without having firsthand knowledge, uh, no doubt they felt uh, the earthquake to a far larger extent in San Jose than the people did in San Francisco. All right. Uh, Al, there's just been a note handed me that that fire we've been looking at, we're still looking at the fire, although I think we have a freeze frame right now uh, of the, uh, the fire, is at a corner of Beach and Divisadero Streets, one and a half blocks from the Palace of Fine Arts. Uh, there have been some deaths reported in Hollister. Uh, and Al, once again, I come to you as my California expert. Do you know where Hollister is? Yes, Hollister would be uh, roughly 30 miles south-southeast of uh, San Jose. It would be, I would estimate, uh, in the vicinity of 80 miles from San Francisco, almost due south, and certainly much closer to the epicenter of this quake uh, if the epicenter is indeed in Santa Cruz. Uh, it would be much closer to the epicenter than the city of San Francisco. Now, just a, a parenthetical note, uh, the 
Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant, uh, there is a report that they are on a level four alert, which is actually their lowest level. Uh, let me stress, let me emphasize, there is absolutely no indication of any damage at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. But that, too, is uh, at least within reach here. How far away uh, is that from the, from the epicenter? Uh, let's, let's make it from San Francisco. Do you happen to know, Al? Uh, it would be difficult for me to, uh, to figure that one out at this point. All right, we'll find someone who knows, and as soon as I know, I'll, I'll be glad to report it to everybody else. Uh, but again, just to sort of recapitulate, as, as a matter of fact, take us back for a moment, Al, to uh, what happened earlier this evening at the park, at Candlestick, and sort of describe to us. Uh, I heard you while you were on the air, and in fact, I just sort of picked up. I was, I was having a sandwich, and I was just about to tune in and listen and watch uh, the beginning of the World Series, and I heard you talk about this historic, unprecedented event, and quite frankly, I didn't know what you were talking about. But well, fill us in, will you? At that point, Ted, I'm not sure I knew what I was talking about, because all I was thinking about, frankly, at that point was survival. Uh, I mean, the interesting thing is, is, as you well know in television, one of the things that uh, you do when you go on the air is you want to come on very, very cleanly. And, and, and those of us in news and sports and Tim McCarver and Jim Palmer and I in the booth are working in a very intense state of concentration uh, at that particular moment. And if somebody were to pinch you, you would probably jump six feet. And all of a sudden, in the middle of all of this, where you're thinking very hard about where you're leading in regard to tape and all of that and taking commands from the truck, uh, there was this, this, this role. And uh, I'm not sure that Tim, who lives in Philadelphia, necessarily knew what it was. In fact, uh, he did feel that, uh, that the crowd was stopping uh, for whatever reason. I knew as a Californian that uh, it was an earthquake. In fact, Tim McCarver is, is in the truck right now. And, and let me, let's get uh, a non-Californian's response from Tim as to what he felt. Hello, Ted. Hello. Uh, How are you, Tim? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, my first uh, reaction was uh, one of the upper deck, the deck above us. Uh, I was in, uh, in Chicago in 1984. Go ahead, Tim. As you see, the traffic backed up in yeah. the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, if ever there was cause for a traffic jam, uh, San Francisco certainly has it tonight. Uh, again, there's been a, an earthquake uh, with a reading of 6.5 to 6.9 on the Richter scale, and uh, that, that traffic, would that be traffic that has come from the Candlestick Park area and is trying to get back into San Francisco? Tim, do you know? I, I, I don't know why I'm asking a Philadelphian. Ted, I, I, I had a feeling that you were going to ask something about it. Ask that question again, and maybe I can help you here. I, I that just, traffic there? Yeah, I was wondering that whether that there, would be... No, that's not a freeway. That is uh, an east-west artery near Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, it, would, it would not be near the freeway system, in fact. That's, that's local traffic, or that's a spectator traffic, or whatever. Again, that's an east-west uh, artery in the city of San Francisco. You're looking at there. Uh, there would normally, Ted, be a lot of traffic in this city anyway at uh, 6.43 local time, so that particular shot is not that unusual. I'm sure there are, there are those who are out uh, gawking and spectating and maybe adding a little bit more to it, but maybe 10 to 15 percent. It's a very heavily traveled, obviously, time of day as it is in most major American cities. But uh, to reiterate, Ted, in terms of uh, the traffic problems in this area, I can't begin to tell you what the magnitude of those problems will be with the collapse of a section of the Bay Bridge, because in the best right, of times, I'll, it's difficult to get around. Let me interrupt you just for one moment, because we have a tape report from our affiliate KGO on the collapse of that Bay Bridge, and I understand there has been at least one fatality. Let's take a look at that report right now. Severed. You're seeing a car that attempted to drive over this 50-foot gap in the Bay Bridge. It has been like a drama here. It has been dangling from the edge, the precipice behind me, and these folks are just getting rescued right now. It's been about an hour-long effort. It's been a frightening scene here. As you can see just below me is where this crack in the Bay Bridge occurred, a 50-foot section. You see down there below the two cars, two cars that were on the upper deck when the bridge collapsed. They fell below. We understand that the people in both of those cars did get out safely. We do All right, so there you have a report from Leslie Brinkley. Uh, 
I apologize to you because I was under the impression that there was some word of uh, what the casualties might have been. We did see someone being attended to there behind Leslie. Uh, I don't know what condition that person was in. We do have a ham radio report now that says there is severe damage in the areas of San Jose and Hollister, California, both of which, as Al Michaels told you, are some miles south uh, some miles south of San Francisco, uh, and therefore that much closer to the epicenter. Uh, and uh, standing by right now, I'm sorry I did not get the name, Sid Sydney Kohara. Right. Sydney, if you can bring us up to date on, on what is happening, whatever new information you can give us, we'd be very grateful for it. Go ahead, Sydney. Um, what we are finding out now is uh, that we are, we are having a pretty terrible problem with some fires in the Bay Area. Uh, one, especially right now, that is raging is in an area known as the Marina District, which is very close to the Golden Gate Bridge. It's a, uh, an, an older district. It's more on the uh, flat level, probably about uh, most of the buildings are probably uh, four or five stories high. Uh, we have a, a, a terrible fire there that I, I can, I remember looking out my window when the uh, earthquake hit, saw some smoke. Um, the building apparently has collapsed and they are looking for people now, if in fact they can get that close, because uh, the latest pictures that we had um, looked like uh, there was no way if someone was in the building that they could have gotten out. Yeah, Sydney, uh, I don't, I don't know if you have uh, access to a uh, to a monitor and whether you're getting the network feed on that monitor. But in point of fact, we've been getting aerial <laughs> shots from the the Goodyear blimp. Uh, and are looking at it right now. Perhaps you'd be good enough to describe precisely where that area is for non-Californians uh, and also what kind of a neighborhood it is because we can see, uh, you know, just what kind of a fire it is. It's an, it really is a raging inferno right now. Right. Uh, if, if you are aware of where the Golden Gate Bridge is as it leads into Marin County, uh, just to the right of the bridge, uh, you have uh, an area that uh, is known as the Marina District. That is where it is. It is uh, just south of the bay before you go under the Golden Gate Bridge so it is uh, it's a very beautiful area um, it is um, just uh, a little bit uh, southwest of uh, Fisherman's Wharf um, it's uh, it's a little bit north of Pacific Heights and like I said it's a very beautiful area near Lombard Street uh, very very picturesque and um, it's really I think it's amazing for me not having lived in the city that long and been in uh, California for about five years to think that that would be the area that would go down first there are, there are many many tall buildings in this area and uh, that's where it looks like probably about a four or five story apartment building uh, that area is very congested there are a lot of people that live in in a small area so uh, I think that that we're very worried here looking at that particular fire because uh, when the earthquake first hit no one really uh, knew we didn't um, really think about telling people as far as to cut off their gas and as soon as we uh, realized to tell them to cut off their gas perhaps in this pati uh, particular situation it was a little too late well I think um, you've I think you've put your finger on precisely the point because it's been suggested to me that what causes fires like that in the event of, a, of an earthquake Mm -hmm. is precisely a ruptured gas main. Now, it, it may well be that even if people had turned off the gas in their homes, when a main ruptures, uh, and if you have any kind of sparks uh, caused by the friction of the earthquake itself, uh, there is nothing that could prevent that fire from beginning. But what reports do you have, uh, Sydney, if you could just bring us up to date? I've been saying now for the past half hour or so that we do not yet have any kinds of casualty reports. We don't know if anyone's been killed. We don't know if anyone's been injured. Right. Uh, can, can you bring me up to speed on that? Ted, what we're finding out at this particular point, I just talked to CHP about 10 minutes ago. And California the Highway Patrol. Right, the California Highway Patrol. Uh, the problem they are having is the problem that I think all the emergency, Office of Emergency Services, all the people in San Francisco are having. The phone lines are down. The California Highway Patrol is trying to get out to all of their offices to try to get reports on what is happening in the particular districts and they're having a very very difficult time I managed to get through and at this particular time they're trying to just get their forces together and try to get uh, try to survey the particular districts in the particular areas uh, within the Bay and the East Bay um, uh, what they could tell me is that they are mobilizing forces they are bringing in their uh, uh, their helicopter and some other other uh, uh, pieces of equipment from Sacramento from the capital they are 
also mobilizing forces from uh, different parts of the state, getting them into the Bay Area and getting ready to disperse them uh, if there's going to be a need. And at this particular time, I think once they finally get the phone lines in, uh, you're going to see a lot of need. All right, let me, uh, let me quickly tap whatever uh, local expertise you have there because I'm hearing that the worst, uh, the worst damage or severe damage at least has taken place in San Jose and in Hollister. How far from San Francisco? What kind of population centers are we talking about? Okay, there? we are looking at San Jose and Hollister. We're looking at, from what I understand, the epicenter was about uh, uh, 50 miles southeast. That is uh, the preliminary report that I'm getting. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm looking at it here. 10 miles northeast of, of Santa Cruz, 10 miles south of San Jose. Uh, they're looking at major damage in those areas, but we haven't gotten any, we don't have any specific reports. Uh, the preliminary report that we do have uh, from the uh, uh, Berkeley Seismology Center, the preliminary estimates are showing that it registered a 6.5. And I don't really know of any uh, uh, instances of severe damage in that area, uh, but since we are uh, located in the San Francisco area, we're very aware of what is happening here. We've got reporters on the scene in uh, different areas in the Oakland area, and we've got a Bay Bureau, which I don't think we've heard from yet, but we're hoping to hear from them any minute now. All right, Sydney, thank you very much. Standing by now is Bob Olson of the Seismic Safety Commission. Uh, Mr. Olson, what can you tell us about the earthquake itself? Thank you very much. I, I would say that we've got a borderline regional catastrophe here. Um, I'm very concerned about what you just mentioned, the areas that we're not hearing from. And that's the epicentral area, the San Jose, which is a very large uh, metropolitan area, the Monterey Peninsula, the Hollister area, where the San Andreas, Hayward, and Calaveras Falls all come together. Plus, what's coming in here now is... Um, we're getting glimpses of widespread damage near the fire. We're seeing some collapsed buildings. Uh, there have been other shots of collapsed elevated freeways in San Francisco. And I'm very worried, given the time of day that this uh, took place, about um, casualties in cars that may have been caught in those um, particular structures. Mr. Olson, forgive my ignorance, but what does your organization do? Well, uh, I was the first director of the California Seismic Safety Commission, and now I'm a private consultant specializing in earthquake and natural hazards uh, mitigation. What is it we should be looking for now? We are looking, I mean, as you and I are speaking together right now, and, and I don't, uh, I hope our viewers don't get the wrong impression, San Francisco is not totally on fire. Sometimes it looks that way when we get too much of a, a close-up there, but we are looking uh, at one particular square block area of San Francisco that is in very, very bad shape. And indeed, there are some other fires uh, in Berkeley and in Oakland. Uh, and Bob Olson, I don't know if you can still hear me. I guess we've just uh, lost that line, and that's not too surprising. We're having trouble with telephone lines all over the region. What Bob Olson, uh, who used to be the commissioner of the Seismic Safety Commission, was telling us is that perhaps the most alarming information uh, of the night is not the information that we have, but the information that we do not have from areas like San Jose and Santa Cruz and Hollister. These are areas about 40, 50, 60 miles south of San Francisco and therefore, therefore on the San Andreas Fault, right on the epicenter of this earthquake, which is registered between 6.5 and 6.9 on the Richter scale. No information at the moment from those areas which could be, and I don't want to alarm people who have families in those areas, but that could be uh, a sign that uh, maybe the worst that has happened there is simply that the telephone system is out. But that is the area that we are most concerned about at the moment, although, as you can see, there is considerable damage in and around San Francisco. Standing by at the White House now is our White House correspondent, my colleague Britt Hume. What's the president doing, and uh, what is the federal government doing or going to do, Britt? Well, the president, to the extent that he could, has put the federal government in action tonight. He is retired to the family quarters here at the White House. Uh, Governor Sununu, uh, his chief of staff, is monitoring the situation. He has called over the uh, one of the heads of the Federal Emergency Management Agency who came here and reported. Uh, Robert Morris is his name, and he uh, said that the uh, earthquake was a 6.9. That puts it at the highest of the range that we've been told. 
and that the epicenter was indeed 60 miles southeast of uh, southeast of San Francisco. Morris has now returned apparently to the uh, to the FEMA headquarters, which will be the Washington command post for such uh, operations as are conducted here. Sununu also um, has reached Department of Defense officials who and made sure that uh, the Pentagon is ready to uh, put uh, troops, if necessary, into action. Uh, nothing much more was said here about that, Ted, but I would regard that as a sign of the seriousness uh, with which the White House regards the potential here. Get the sense, Britt, that uh, folks at the White House know any more about what's going on right now than we do. I don't mean that to sound like it's not a question. It's just at times like this, sometimes it's it's more difficult for them to get information than it is for us. Well, I suspect that in terms of actually seeing anything, that those pictures from the Goodyear blimp are probably the best view of it that anybody in this town has had. Uh, I do know that Governor Sununu tried to reach uh, officials in the governor's office in California. Governor Duke Majin uh, was not at this dinner here tonight, which was a Republican governor's dinner. apparently out of the country. I, I could be wrong about that, but that was the information that the White House officials here had. And he got some details, uh, which uh, go no further, really, than the details we have reported about the extent of the damage in the San Francisco area. And, of course, uh, obviously the White House is watching with considerable alarm uh, to see what has happened in the area south uh, near the center of the earthquake. All right, Britt Hume, thank you very much. I'm going to go back now to uh, my colleague from ABC Sports, Al Michaels. This was to be the night, Al, that you reported on the, uh, on the third game of the World Series. Instead, here we are doing live and continuous coverage of what looks as though it may be quite a catastrophe in the Northern California area. Just bring us, uh, and, and once again, we're looking at that picture, and I understand why uh, uh, we keep putting it up. It's a very dramatic-looking shot, but uh, again, I don't want to leave people with the impression that San Francisco is ablaze. Uh, that is one relatively confined area of, of San Francisco, uh, and there are other uh, major incidents that have occurred, perhaps the biggest of which that we know about at the moment is that the bridge that connects Oakland and San Francisco, one, one portion of the upper span of that bridge has collapsed onto the lower span. Uh, but again, Al, one of the reasons we are staying on the air right now is because we do not yet have even preliminary casualty reports yet, and we'd like to give our audience some sense of how many, if any, uh, people have been injured. Now, if you would sort of bring us up to speed, take it uh, uh, as you were doing a few moments ago when we talked, uh, from where you first became aware of the fact that there was an earthquake, and then what happened during the course of the next hour or so out there at Candlestick Park. Well, again, to reiterate, Ted, basically uh, most of the crowd was here. Uh, they would have had 62,000 total, and I would suspect that uh, 55 to 58,000 people were in the ballpark. Uh, it lasted, uh, I would guess, uh, around 30 seconds. Fortunately, there was no major jolt. It was more of a steady shake and roll. But there was a, a very definite sense, I'm sure, amongst uh, people who've lived in this area and have experienced these, uh, that a jolt was imminent, a major jolt. Uh, as I mentioned before, there was a sense of um, us in the mezzanine uh, with the upper deck above us and the lower deck below us of, of moving backwards and, in effect, uh, collapsing upon uh, the lower deck. Uh, there was a strange feeling uh, in the stadium. There was, a, I, I would guess, an ooh and an ah. Again, I didn't really have the presence of mind to necessarily uh, be that tuned into uh, uh, the collective gasps of 58,000. But then, uh, as there normally is when you're with a, a large gathering during an earthquake, uh, there were wry smiles and, in fact, uh, Oh, five or six minutes after the quake, when we had lost power and didn't have to remain in the broadcast booth, uh, Jim Palmer and Tim McCarver and I went out onto uh, uh, the back of the mezzanine area at Candlestick Park, and the fans were out there saying, gee, you know, I hope they can get the game underway, and, you know, uh, hey, guys, do you think the Giants can come back? Uh, so at first, you're not quite sure what had taken place, uh, and then uh, the reality of it, of course, begins to settle in at, uh, amongst the crowd. They then evacuated the crowd. It took them a good, um, I would estimate, 40 minutes before the announcement was made that uh, the candlestick should be evacuated. Strangely, um, very few people left the ballpark, and uh, even more strangely, I think very few people uh, got out onto the field. Perhaps they were not allowed out onto the field, but I mean, if uh, 
uh, we were ever, uh, God forbid, to have a, a situation like this uh, take place again in a major American arena, they should immediately let everybody get out onto the field, which probably would have been the safest place for everybody to be at Candlestick Park. And then everybody sort of uh, filed out uh, when the game was uh, postponed officially. Again, fortunately, there was no panic. There was no crowding. None of that. As far as I can tell, there have been no injuries at Candlestick Park. Again, I'm sure they will be checking for structural damage as to what will happen to the rest of the World Series. I wouldn't have a clue at this point, Ted, because uh, the problems in this area are uh, far larger right now than the resumption of play in the World Series. Al Michaels, as, uh, as we've been saying periodically throughout the course of this evening, one of the reasons that we have not yet been able to bring you any casualty reports, and I am assuming that there will have been some casualties, although as you pointed out, uh, fortunately they do not appear to have been any at Candlestick Park itself. As soon as we get any casualty reports, we will of course bring them to you. But let me explain once again what is getting in the way of collecting any of that information. The phone lines are down. There is very bad communication. Uh, one of the miracles is that you and I are still able to communicate at all and that we're able to see you uh, and get that picture and get some of those remarkable aerial shots from the Goodyear blimp. Uh, you know, it, it looked at one point uh, as though there was almost an emotional aftershock there at the stadium. Uh, we saw some of the players with their wives and a couple of the wives quite literally in tears uh, as ball players did uh, what everybody else does in a situation like that. You start to look for your family. Uh, you try to get everybody together again. Mm -hmm. You start counting heads. We're looking at some of that videotape now of some of the ball players with their youngsters. You want to take us through that? Right. Well, I can see Storm Davis, uh, the Oakland the pitcher. And you're exactly right. Uh, what had happened, Ted, is that, uh, and, and there, uh, I believe, is Terry Steinbach. Yes, that is. And, and his wife and Mark McGuire and Faye Vincent is in your picture right now, the commissioner of baseball. It took a while for it to settle in uh, before everybody really realized what had taken place. And then the wives were allowed to, uh, to go down onto the playing field uh, and join their husbands and uh, the children came down as well and everybody, as I say, very orderly filed out of the park. You know, one thing about earthquakes, Ted, is that you're not sure uh, how close to the epicenter you are. So, in fact, uh, had we been at the epicenter of this quake uh, tonight, not this particular quake, but let's say that there had been an, uh, oh, a small earthquake at Candlestick Park in the neighborhood of uh, 2.8 or 3.2, there would have been very, very, there would have been no damage here, very little any place else. So I think that was perhaps the sense of what people had. You you begin to feel you are at the epicenter, and if you were, this would have been a very, very small quake uh, where it's centered near Candlestick Park. You have no idea, of course, where the epicenter was. And as I stated before, once I knew it was in the six range, you knew as a, uh, as a Californian that it had to be uh, 75 to 100 miles away at least because now, let uh, me, uh, all the damage is done near the epicenter, most let, of it. Let me just interrupt you for one moment. Once again, we're getting that extraordinary uh, aerial shot from the, uh, from the blimp of the fire in the uh, marina area. That's not too far. Uh, from the Golden Gate Bridge, which I, I, I believe those are the lights of the Golden Gate Bridge that you can see in the background there. Uh, I am told that the fire in the, in the marina area, that fire that you're looking at, appears to be gas-fed. Uh, and the uh, fire department in San Francisco is not putting water on the fire because that would dampen it down, obviously. Uh, that would be the good news, but the bad news would be that dampening it down would create fumes, which in turn could cause a major explosion. So what they're trying to do, what the fire department is trying to do, is to surround, protect the surrounding billion, uh, buildings, but they can't put fire on the, uh, they, they can't put water, rather, on the main fire itself until the gas leak itself is capped. Now, how they are going to do that, as you look at that fire, you can see uh, what an extraordinary blaze it is. How they're going to cap the gas leak, I do not know. Uh, Al Michaels, you know, you were talking a moment ago uh, about the orderly fashion in which Candlestick Park was evacuated. In point of fact, I don't know if you're aware, but at one time the police inside Candlestick Park were urging people not to leave the park, to stay there, because they said the building itself, the structure, is uh, structurally sound and apparently they believe it is a fairly good place to be in an earthquake. Uh, well Go ahead, Al. Well, I think they would have been uh, remarkably prescient to be able to predict that and, and not predict uh, uh, and not take into effect what might have been uh, a large aftershock or aftershocks. I think it was more a case uh, in retrospect here, Ted, of, uh, of it being a very good idea that the police did what they did 
at least to avoid panic because uh, now that I begin to think about it, had uh, somebody come on with a panic-stricken announcement to evacuate, uh, you can imagine what it would be like in a stadium that would hold in excess of 55,000 people, a stadium with relatively small aisles. Again, this was a ballpark built before a lot of the modern stadiums of today, which uh, have uh, Al, for, better for, forgive me, Al, forgive me for interrupting you. I don't know if you can see. We're looking at some street scenes right now. Do you have a network line in front of you? Can yes, you see I do. What in we're fact, I can at? see. I can. All right. Yes, so that, you can is... see there, there really has been some extraordinary damage. Uh, do you happen to recognize that area? Well, that, that appears to me to either be the area we're seeing uh, right now in those live shots from above. Uh, the houses in the area in which that fire is taking place right now are similar uh, in style to those. Again, I can't tell you for certain that that is uh, uh, tape there of what uh, you are seeing or what we have been seeing live. But uh, it, it appears to me to be in the neighborhood and similar to the uh, the types of homes that uh, would be in, involved in the inferno that we've seen in the Marina District. Well, indeed, you were saying a moment ago that that is a uh, it is a residential area that clearly looks like a residential area, and quite frankly, the way that fire looked and the way uh, those buildings were cracked, uh, it would be consistent with everything we've heard. Let me just say again, because we've spent so much time looking at that fire this evening, uh, that apparently what the fire department is doing is quite deliberately not dousing that inferno uh, with water because of their fear that by dousing the fire they would create toxic fumes that would be spread all over the area and that ironically would be even more dangerous than the fire. Um, Al, if you would, just sort of set the stage for us again. Uh, timing in terms of when this happened, how it happened, and uh, what's happened, although it now seems almost trivial to be talking about the World Series, what in fact has happened to the series? Well, everybody in San Francisco is just euphoric, and throughout the Bay Area we've uh, documented that, and I'm sure people know how uh, excited this entire area was to have the whole World Series being played here. So there was a sense of celebration, and everybody was filing into Candlestick Park, and it was to have been the first World Series game to be played at Candlestick Park in 27 years. And uh, we were just coming on the air. We have a pregame show that begins at 5 o'clock. I think first pitch was scheduled in the uh, neighborhood of 520 or 525. And uh, so the, the crowd was still filing in, and people, I'm sure, were still parking their cars. Some of them, even though, as I mentioned, most of the uh, people appeared to have been in the stadium. They were about ready, as I recall, on the field to introduce the, the lineups, to introduce the, uh, the, the crowd to the players. They had a band uh, playing, and it was just a, uh, a very celebratory type of mood that had permeated Candlestick at that point, when all of a sudden, uh, I'm sure to those who uh, have not lived through this type of thing, uh, there had to be a sense of what in the world was going on. As Tim McCarver mentioned, he began to, to think that the, the crowd was stopping for whatever reason. It wasn't the, uh, a point uh, where you would expect something like that. You might expect something like that uh, during the course of a rally. Uh, those of us who've been here and have been through them, it didn't take very long for us to understand that this was an earthquake, and you just have a feeling of holding on at that point because you don't know if it will get worse. You don't know if you will get that uh, tremendous jolt that you all fear and certainly in a precarious position of being in a, in a baseball stadium and not on the field and and in essence uh, the bottom of the upper deck uh, it was a, just a, a horrible moment and uh, we were on the air and uh, it was a case of uh, as I say us feeling or at least me feeling that we were going backwards for just a second and we're about to collapse onto the the lower deck. In fact, I understand you're seeing right now uh, what we were going through, and I was looking back at that point, uh, knowing what was going on. Tim and Jim, uh, Jim I know has uh, lived in California off and on for, for years as well, but uh, it, it takes a little while for the reality of it to settle in. And again, you know you have been through a quake. The key was, I think, why people uh, were, oh, not... I don't want to say giddy or anything, but when we went out onto the mezzanine and the fans were talking baseball and will the game be resumed, they had no sense, of course, of the magnitude of this. As All I right. say, had this been centered here, uh, it wouldn't have done very much uh, damage outside the epicenter, but uh, it, it obviously was a major, major uh, earthquake at its epicenter, and we obviously right. felt the effects here. Al Michaels, let me just interrupt you for a moment because we, we have uh, some new information that we haven't been able to report yet. We, we received a call from a man who said he spoke to his wife in Santa Cruz. Now, that is the area right near the epicenter. That 
that we've been talking about, uh, and we have been making the observation, indeed I was speaking with Bob Olson a moment ago, uh, who at one point was the commissioner of the Seismic Safety Commission uh, in California. We have Bob Olson on the phone. Uh, the man who spoke to his wife in San Francisco, Mr. Olson, said uh, that she told him that as of 9.55 Eastern time, that's about 15 minutes ago, that the house was still shaking. Now, what does that tell you? What does that tell me? The house is still shaking in Santa Cruz? In Santa Cruz about 15 minutes ago, and as we know, the, uh, uh, the first waves that they felt in San Francisco would have been around 8.05 Eastern time. So yeah. almost three hours later, they're, they're still shaking in Santa Cruz. Well, in the upper central area, it looks, sounds to me like they're getting lots of rapid aftershocks. Um, these may be very relatively small magnitude and uh, you know occurring fairly frequently but right in that in that vicinity um, somebody raised the question about uh, how long will these continue well they uh, aftershocks from an event will continue for weeks and, and maybe months but only a few of those will be really noticeable and those usually occur within a few days let me just uh, tell you, Mr. Wilson, I, I assume you cannot see our picture right now, but we're looking once again at a sort of wide uh, aerial shot of the uh, San Francisco area, and at the heart uh, of the shot is that blazing fire, uh, and you see a few rows of lights, but those are vehicles. Those are the headlights of cars that you see. One of the things you may notice is that you see very few lights, that is, electrical lights, in the San Francisco area. I am told that there is no power anywhere between San Francisco and San Bruno, that the San Francisco International Airport is limited to out, outbound flights. There are no inbound flights. Apparently, there have been some cracks in the runway. Oakland Airport, Alameda Naval Air Station, no flights in or out. Two air traffic controllers at San Francisco International Airport were injured by flying gl uh, glass, and there has been some structural damage to the air traffic control tower. So these are just a few of the fragmentary pieces of information that we're getting about what's going on at San Francisco right now. The worst news of all is, now that night has fallen in San Francisco, is that the power is out, uh, and uh, we are hearing that the difficulty in containing the uh, the fires there and I uh, you know that one fire of course has really dominated our pictures uh, once again let me emphasize uh, it's not our impression that there are very many fires around the San Francisco area but there are some others some over in Oakland some in Berkeley uh, and the danger uh, the fire department says is they can't use water on those fires which they believe have been caused by a ruptured gas main uh, because dousing the fire would simply cause noxious fumes then, toxic noxious fumes, uh, to be admitted. There's an Associated Press advisory that uh, says there will be more information coming on casualties. Uh, the information that we have right now is the police are talking about six dead in San Francisco, crushed uh, in cars by a building collapse. Now, I can't pretend uh, to tell you that I know where that building collapsed, what we have seen so far, and we've been taking these fragmentary pieces of videotape and information as we get them. What we've seen so far has been of sort of hairline fractures uh, out at Candlestick Park, uh, some major damage to some of the highways uh, leading from Candlestick Park into uh, uh, the center of San Francisco. We have seen that one huge fire and, of course, the Bay Bridge, which connects Oakland and San Francisco, one 30 to 50 foot segment of the upper level. There's, that's a two-tiered bridge at that point. A 30 to 50 segment of that bridge, uh, foot segment of of that bridge has collapsed onto the lower section of the bridge. Still standing by at the White House is our White House correspondent, Britt Hume. Uh, Britt, any late word on what the federal government is doing? Yeah, well, Ted, the, uh, the, w the latest information the White House has, and of course this is the, the worrisome thing, is that the greatest damage is in the Santa Cruz area. And of course that links with the information you got in that telephone report and suggests that uh, in the areas uh, to the south, uh, from which so little information has come is where the greatest trouble is. A couple of other things. Governor Sununu has apparently reached um, California go uh, Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy 
And as a consequence of that phone call, he, has, he Governor Sununu, has authorized an Air Force plane to fly uh, California Governor George Duke Majin back to the United States from Frankfurt, which is either where Governor Duke Majin is at the moment or the nearest place from which he can fly. So he will soon presumably be bound back to the United States. That is the latest here, Ted. All right, and just to sort of bring you a little bit up to date, I told you a moment ago that uh, there was a report of at least six people who were crushed to death by a building that collapsed. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounce it. It's B-L-U-X-O-M-E, Bluxom Street. Uh, apparently part of an old building collapsed on a number of cars uh, that were passing by, and it looks at least six people uh, were crushed to death when that building collapsed. Um, one of the great difficulties we have in terms of bringing information to you at this point uh, is on the one hand we have all kinds of information from Candlestick Park where mercifully very little has happened other than that the World Series have been cancelled and all the people who were in the stadium have been asked to leave and, and all but a few uh, including uh, Al Michaels and our ABC sports staff out there uh, have evacuated the area. Um, we know what's happening there. We can show you uh, by virtue of the Goodyear blimp and our camera on board that blimp some aerial shots of San Francisco, but it is night there now. Uh, and what you uh, can see, uh, we're looking at it, uh, are what appear to be rows of lights, but those, uh, I hasten to remind you, are rows of cars, most of them stalled in traffic, and those are the automobile headlights that you're looking at there. For the most part, what you see is a blacked out San Francisco. The electricity is out. The telephones are out. The power is down. Uh, and, of course, that compounds all the, uh, the other problems uh, that have been caused by the earthquake. Uh, and, clearly, it also compounds the problem of communication. And we're having a devil of a time finding out for you just what the overall casualty report in and around San Francisco has been. To repeat, however, uh, San Francisco, even though we've been focusing most of our attention on that city tonight, San Francisco does not seem to be uh, where the worst trouble may be, and I stress the may. The epicenter of the, uh, of the earthquake occurred some 40 to 50 miles south of San Francisco in an area uh, that is sort of surrounded by Santa Cruz and San Jose and Hollister, and that may be where the worst damage of the evening has occurred. Al Michaels, anything new that you can add? Uh, no, but I can only tell you, Ted, that this area will uh, come to a virtual stop because of the collapse of that portion of the Bay Bridge. Uh, at the time the earthquake hit, most of the traffic on that bridge would have been on the, the lower level. If it was a typical rush hour type of situation, it would have been... Uh, uh, completely bumper to bumper and stop and go on the bottom level and the top level collapsing onto the bottom level would have under normal circumstances uh, would have had what I would describe as a moderate amount of traffic. Uh, for the most part the uh, commuting flow would go from the city of San Francisco to the East Bay. Those people would have taken the bottom level and those coming from the East Bay into San Francisco at that hour would have been on the upper level of the Bay Bridge. But th that is beyond question, uh, Ted. Uh, uh, far and away the most important artery linking this area of some six million people uh, and obviously I'm not going to sit here and, and estimate how long it will take for the bridge to be repaired and for traffic to resume but uh, it will be absolute uh, gridlock around this area for as long as it takes to to fix that bridge and in terms of the I think you said that there were about 55 to 60 thousand people at Candlestick there tonight no injuries at Candlestick all those people made it out all right as far as I can tell, I mean, I'd hate to, to tell you that every, all of the 58,000 are fine, Ted, but, I mean, there was no indication that we saw, uh, and everybody seemed to file out in an orderly fashion. I didn't see anybody being wheeled out on a stretcher or anything like that, and I haven't had any reports of that. So as far as I can tell you, everything was fine here at Candlestick. All right. Al Michaels, thanks very much. Uh, I'll probably be coming back to you in just a few minutes, but standing by by phone now is Willis Jacobs of the National Earthquake Information Center. Uh, Mr. Jacobs, I don't know what information you have access to, but please, whatever you've got, tell us. Well, our information is pretty sketchy. The earthquake did occur at 5.04 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time today. We computed the magnitude at 6.9 on the Richter scale. We have reports of damage and injuries in the San Francisco Bay Area, partial collapse of buildings in San Jose, one person dead of a heart attack there and four injured. 
damage in San Benito, Santa Clara, San Mateo, and it was felt in western Nevada. And unfortunately, that's the extent of our information at this time. What should we uh, what should we conclude from the fact that we are not hearing much from those areas uh, around the epicenter, those areas around Santa Cruz and San Jose? I believe the problem is that the, tele the telephone lines have been cut. I think that's the main thing. Now, of all the places in the world, Northern California probably has more reason to expect earthquakes uh, than perhaps any other populated, heavily populated area. Uh, haven't allowance has been made for circumstance like this and isn't there some kind of an emergency communication system that exists uh, i don't know if there is or not as far as the the uh, people are concerned in that area we haven't been get able to get through to uh, our seismologists in the area either just give me a sense, Mr. Jacobs, of, of what an earthquake uh, along the magnitude of uh, 6.5 to 6.9, uh, how does that compare with other earthquakes that, uh, that we have known over the past few years? Well, this is classified as a strong earthquake. It has plenty of energy to cause damage and uh, casualties depending on the depth, depending on where it is and what type of a fault occurred when the earthquake happened. And certainly it's a large enough earthquake to have severe damage and casualties in the San Francisco Bay Area. All right, Willis Jacobs of the uh, National Earthquake Information Center, thank you very much indeed. What you were looking at there, and more and more that is going to be the picture of the night, uh, is darkness. The, uh, that last shot that you saw, I believe, were lights from Candlestick Park, uh, but the other, the high shot from the Goodyear Blimp, uh, is now increasingly, that's the shot, I believe, of Candlestick Park, uh, but the other picture that we were looking at is increasingly going to be able to focus on only one point of light, and that is that huge fire that's burning down near the waterfront in San Francisco itself. Al Michaels, were you trying to jump in there a moment ago? Uh, no, sir, Ted. Uh, I'm not quite certain those are the lights of Candlestick Park. Uh, well, guess now I'm being told that they are. The, the lights, uh, the what would be the, the playing field lights, have basically been uh, been turned off. So, yes, uh, I can see a better shot of it right now. Those are the remaining lights at Candlestick. I'm not sure how much power is on here. Those, in fact, could be uh, the emergency lights. Uh, another thing that came to mind, Ted, is the, the fact that as many structures in, in this area are uh, forced to do through the years, uh, they must undergo um, extensive examination and uh, the officials come in uh, from time to time and take a look at uh, better earthquake proofing measures. And I know for a fact it'll come to light later on. I don't have any reference material with me right now, obviously, but uh, Candlestick Park underwent a relatively extensive earthquake check and in fact some uh, extra poles were added to help support the roof above the upper deck. As I recall, that was eight or nine years ago. Now, whether or not that came into play, I can't tell you. Now, at the risk of being repetitious, I just don't want uh, our viewers to become excessively uh, alarmed. We keep talking about Candlestick Park, and while you and I are talking about Candlestick Park, we see that blazing inferno there. That is, in fact, happening, and it is a terrible fire, and it appears to be in one of the older residential areas of San Francisco, down near the waterfront, uh, and perhaps about three-quarters of a mile from the Golden Gate Bridge. But I want to make it clear, that fire has nothing to do with what happened at Candlestick Park. Apparently, there were, there were neither fatalities nor, uh, almost miraculously, it appears, any injuries. What we are going to do right now is take a look at a package of some video that we have put together Together that will give you a sense uh, of uh, what's been happening earlier this evening. But before we do that, we're going to go live to uh, uh, our uh, affiliated station out in San Francisco, KGO. Approximately 50 minutes to move our way from Candlestick through Hunter's Point using some of the bad road, the back roads that we are familiar with. What we saw was eerie and, frankly, frightening. There are no lights in the city to speak of now, except in a few of the highest buildings that have their own power sources. People out on, uh, out on the stoops and in the streets of uh, all the homes in, in Hunters Point in that area. Then we moved uh, uh, across near Army Street through the Warehouse District, uh, cut over toward Mission and Market Street. Uh, in fact, went past uh, Sutter General Hospital there, and uh, that had been uh, completely cut off, cordoned off by emergency people. Uh, lights on in there, obviously working very hard at this point. We moved down Potrero and uh, through the business district and up over into Russian Hill. Now, 
uh, we saw the same thing. People on the streets, people unfocused, uh, appearing not to know what to do. We can tell you one thing, that once we arrived at approximately Lombard Street and moved our way into uh, this, uh, uh, the, uh, the North Beach area, we smelled gas at virtually every intersection. The gas is everywhere. All we can tell you is not to smoke not to light fires. Don't do anything which can disturb that. If you smell gas in your building, get out of your building. But be careful. It is dark now, and anything can happen on those streets. But if you smell gas, please stay out of the building. And it's going to be very obvious to you out there. It will do no good to panic at this point, obviously, but it is extremely important that you do that. Again, it, it, it's, it's very unfocused, but the sense of seeing the city, uh, the smoke coming from the marina, and we could see it all the way oh, with yes. no lights, is, uh, is a truly frightening experience. Experience. At the stadium itself, um, I think a lot of people, in a sense, in a, in a mild state of shock, not knowing when to leave, not knowing where to go, and really not knowing much information. So many of them from the South Bay as they were. You were outside. Uh, at the I time. was standing outside in the parking lot, about to go into the elevator yes. that, in fact, broke down. So I was I'm virtually a minute from there. Did you see any structural damage to Candlestick? Was there, there was structural damage. Now, you're going to hear con you know, conflicting reports on this. Some pieces of concrete, particularly in the walkway areas, cracked and simply crumbled there. We did not not see sections of the upper lip of the stadium fall, as was reported earlier. But there are cracks visible. They are not big cracks. The stadium apparently took this fairly well. I talked to Bob Lurie, who said his people told him there was no severe damage to the stadium. And so that's why they felt they shouldn't move people out in a panic situation. They oh, let yes. them filter their way out of the place. Strangely, when we left the stadium, people were staying in their cars, you know, breaking out the, the food they had there for, for, uh, for, for whatnot. And uh, that was probably a very good idea. Okay. Pete, thank you. We'll let you okay. uh, catch your breath here now uh, as well. We have to uh, late report that the Amtrak, uh, inbound Amtrak, the California Zephyr, uh, Zephyr has been stopped in Sacramento, so it will not uh, be headed to Oakland, obviously. We have a late word now from the seismology lab in Berkeley, and we'll go to Willie Monroe there. Willie? Well, Don, not much new to report here. As a matter of fact, uh, here they are very certain that it's uh, at least 7.0 on the Richter scale. I've heard reports of uh, as much as 6.9, but they've uh, pretty much determined that 7.0 right here. One caveat, though, they still have to uh, assign a magnitude to the earthquake on the basis of a review of all the California seismology stations that are reporting because uh, the equipment here, after 6.5 on the Richter scale, tends not to be quite as accurate. And so you have to kind of look at uh, what's going on. So that may change. It may, in fact, be less than 7.0. Right now at the seismology station at uh, UC Berkeley, they're saying it's 7.0. Basically, uh, they're saying you expect hundreds of aftershocks. Uh, again, nothing, uh, the l very low probability of something in the magnitude of what we felt for the first initial shock, but perhaps as high as five on the Richter scale. But uh, as the days go on, the hours go on, uh, that possibility diminishes as well. That's the situation here at the UC Seismology Lab. They're going over their charts and they're uh, working uh, diligently in their laboratory. They're getting ready to go to the scene, the epicenter, to try to get a good look at uh, what's happened there. They expect that they will actually be able to see physically on the surface of the ground uh, a break uh, as much as uh, three to five feet because they believe that the actual earthquake itself has uh, created a separation of uh, some 30 kilometers underground. Yes, well, it was in the same area. Apparently, I believe it's the Lake Elsador area, and we're double-checking that is where the uh, epicenter is. Is that correct? Is that the information you have? Well, the information I have is basically uh, 10 miles northeast Santa Cruz, 20 miles south of San Jose. I don't really have a map to... Uh, yeah, it's an area that uh, has had movement before as well, and, of course, so some of the uh, uh, some of the areas nearby there, uh, Hollister and so on, would uh, obviously suffer damage uh, near the epicenter. Well, there was uh, another earthquake uh, here August 8th, and there was a magnitude 5.4, and this was a general the same region, so that's yes. uh, basically what we're talking about. That's new information, though, upgrading that to 7.0. Okay, Willie Monroe, we thank you. Let's go now to the Richmond-San Rafael Bridge, uh, Channel 7's Carol Ivey, with uh, a lot of traffic, obviously. Carol? Don, what you're looking at is traffic moving slowly but surely across the Richmond-San Rafael Bridge. I am at the east end of the bridge. We just arrived here. If you can see behind me, what's happening is the power is completely out on the bridge, but it is open and moving. People are not being charged tolls. If you need to get to Marin County from the East Bay, this is the way to go. In fact, if you need to get anywhere from the East Bay to the rest of the Bay Area, this may be the way to go. I talked to a structural engineer inside the, the bridge office just moments ago. 
She told me that the bridge, despite earlier reports, never was shut today. I also want to tell you that we have made extensive checks in Marin County. The power is out in most of the county, but thankfully there are no fatalities and no serious injuries. One sheriff's deputy said to me, we're very, very lucky here in the North Bay. There seem to be no major problems. We've been hearing minor reports of gas smells, but again, maybe some of the little good news that I can report here from the North Bay is that Marin County seems to have survived this earthquake very well. And again, the Richmond San Rafael Bridge is open, is open and has remained open throughout this earthquake crisis. This is the way to get to other parts of the Bay Area if you have to. Don? All right, Carol. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, obviously, uh, it's going to be a very difficult for a uh, commute for uh, people to get uh, home to the East Bay tonight, but uh, we understand that uh, that bridge and also the ones south of the Bay Bridge uh, will be open, we hope. Uh, now, we'll go back to the Marina District. As we told you earlier, this is obviously an area that has been very hard hit. Uh, fire crews uh, coming into this, this inferno as uh, apartment buildings collapsed. Remember, the Marina District uh, was filled for, uh, uh, is landfill, and therefore a number of the very expensive apartments and townhouses in this area have collapsed, fire burning unchecked. Uh, they're trying, uh, it's been very difficult. There have been some injuries, it appears. Uh, some people perhaps more panicked than anything else as they try to evacuate them from the homes, but the fire burns on San Francisco's Marina District and Inferno. We're painting on the second floor and uh, it, everything just started shaking and it's a plaster and lath building and just whole sheets of plaster were coming off the ceiling and the walls. And um, I was in the bathroom painting, Randy was in the living room. And I ran to the uh, bathroom door and stood there and he was trying to get into a doorway and the floor was falling at such an angle it, it made him fall down. There had been a courtyard in the backyard and all the rubble and the, the pipes from the boiler all had fallen over so we had to crawl over and I held the baby so we could crawl over and hand the baby from one to another so we could crawl across the, the, all the debris in the back. Again, you see the Marina District, uh, the Jefferson Divisadero area, where these uh, these very expensive buildings have collapsed, and the fire continues as uh, San Francisco Fire Department tries to fight it. This was this was a four-story building, and that's the kind of problem they are trying to evacuate people who may have been inside. A lot of people at home at that time or during the commute hour, as uh, the earthquake struck at uh, 5:04 uh, this afternoon in. Northern California. We have uh, an unofficial word, or it perhaps is official now, uh, seven people, uh, we uh, know seven people have died uh, uh, in this crash, including the one, or in this quake rather, uh, including the one when an old building south of Market uh, collapsed on uh, people in automobiles. And uh, there is one other death too, uh, perhaps one on the Bay Bridge when that section of it uh, collapsed. But uh, here trying to get people uh, out of their homes, some injuries, uh, perhaps just uh, panic as well. And uh, this, if it indeed is uh, the big one that uh, we've heard so much about, and uh, people trying to, uh, to do whatever they can to stop the fire. But part of the problem, obviously, is, uh, is gas. Store water, prepare for aftershocks, prepare for three days of no services. You got 90 minutes of light left. You better make use of your time. Stand here ain't doing nothing. And uh, it's dark now. Indeed, uh, there is a problem with uh, water pipes bursting all over uh, Northern California. People are on the streets. They're not going home. There is gridlock traffic-wise. Well, people try to get across the Golden Gate Bridge, which apparently is okay, although 19th Avenue, one of the approaches to the Golden Gate Bridge, is closed because uh, one of the lanes there has uh, apparently collapsed. Go uh, prepare yourselves! Prepare yourselves! Shut off the gas! Shut off electricity! Store water in your bathtub! Don't expect services for 72 hours. All right, that is a, a warning from uh, police, and that is a part of the problem here, that we have no electricity, uh, there's no power, the city virtually dark at this hour, perhaps illuminated only by that monstrous fire in the Marina District. Uh, sewer lines have collapsed, water lines uh, are also torn apart. Uh, they're advising to stock up, as you heard, uh, on, uh, on bottled water. 280, uh, the freeway is closed in San Francisco. Uh, San Mateo Bridge, uh, we'll find out the latest there, because that's certainly one of the accesses to the uh, East Bay. Here's Lisa Stark. Lisa? Well,
Well, we were at the San Mateo Bridge earlier, Don, and I can tell you it was closed at that time. I do not know if it is still closed. I am sorry, because at this point we have moved north to the Amfac Hotel in Burlingame. The hotel is behind me. What you can see is what is left of the elevator shaft of this 10-story hotel, a 25-year-old hotel. Apparently what happened is a 1,500-gallon water tank on the roof sheared off when the quake hit. It hit the elevator shaft, took the shaft and the elevator down with it. I can tell you no one was in the elevator apparently at the time. A very good stroke of good luck and in fact there were no major injuries here. Uh, meeting at the hotel were 500 delegates from the California State Baptist Convention. They are all okay. They want me to send word out to their loved ones tonight, to their family, to their friends, that they all escaped just fine. The hotel has been evacuated. As you can well imagine, there's extensive damage. Not all right, let me just uh, fill in for you. We have been listening in and, and viewing as uh, KGO in San Francisco, our station out in San Francisco, as their reporters uh, are trying to bring the, uh, trying to bring the uh, viewers of the Bay Area up to date on what is happening. Let's go back now to that report. Which are still open, although there is no power in this area. All of the hotels here are dark. Electricity is out here as it is in most other places. And I'm standing on Bayshore Boulevard in front of the hotel. Much of the road is closed. A few cars are getting through uh, southbound, but the road is completely blocked off northbound. Uh, we did uh, see one gentleman taken away in an ambulance from here. He was not seriously hurt, but he apparently fell and suffered bruises and contusions. He has been taken to the hospital. But again, here at the Amfac Hotel, again, major damage to the front of this hotel as the elevator shaft collapsed after it was hit by the water gallon tank, a 1,500-gallon uh, tank filled with water, which came crashing down when the earthquake hit. And that is the latest from here in Burlingame. All right, Lisa Stark, if you are just joining us, I'm Don Sanchez in the uh, KGO TV newsroom in San Francisco. A major earthquake struck today in Northern California. It uh, apparently registered seven on the Richter scale. That is the latest number. It struck at 5.04. Of course, it caused uh, cancellation of the third game of the World Series. The epicenter was 10 miles northeast of Santa Cruz, located on the San Andreas Fault at the intersection of the Sargent Fault. Uh, and uh, that's the same epicenter as a quake in August that registered 5.4, and also the the same area where there was a quake uh, June 27th, 1988 in the uh, Lake Elsman quake area and that registered 5.7. San Francisco city government now is operating at 1003 Turk Street. Uh, nothing in City Hall at this point, 1003 Turk Street. Uh, the biggest damage or the most visible are several places, the Bay Bridge and also the Marina District of San Francisco. The marina built on landfill. All right, we have been listening in, as I said a moment ago, to Don Sanchez and other members of the KGO news crew as they begin to pull together some of the information that is coming in from all over the Bay Area. Let me perform one small public service here right now. AT&T reports that uh, there has been an absolute surge of phone calls going into San Francisco, over a million phone calls uh, in one five-minute period. You can imagine what that is doing to already overtaxed phone lines. Uh, and AT&T is asking, and I hope you'll agree that it makes some sense, that you not call into San Francisco, but rather allow those people in San Francisco to call out. They're the ones with the information. We can understand that a great many of you are concerned about friends, loved ones, uh, and relatives in the San Francisco area, in the area of Santa Cruz and San Jose and Hollister, all down that San Andreas Fault from San Francisco down to San Jose. Uh, clearly, there has been significant damage tonight. At the moment, we are hearing that at least seven people have been killed, but I'm sure uh, that is merely a preliminary report at this time. Uh, what we're hearing and seeing, uh, and as far as the seeing goes, we've been pulling together sort of a package of some of the highlights of what has been coming in over the past few minutes. Maybe we should take a look at that right now. Uh, it's clearly daylight here, so obviously this was shot at least two or three hours ago. It is now nighttime in San Francisco. Uh, and the fact of the matter is that among the other things that have happened that were not visible to us when we were looking at some of these early shots of buckled highways, uh, among the most serious things that have happened is that all the services are out. And perhaps the most dramatic piece of videotape you're going to see uh, tonight uh, in addition to the, the fire that we've been looking at is that view of the Bay Bridge which connects 
Oakland to San Francisco. As you can see, a fairly significant section, about a 30 to 50 foot section of the upper level collapsed on the lower level. Uh, we believe that there was one fatality connected with that crash, but what it has done that will have uh, an enormously far-reaching effect on the residents both of Oakland and San Francisco is that it has closed down perhaps the most used bridge between those two segments. The San Mateo Bridge, for those of you who are familiar with that area, that's down a little bit further south of this particular area, has also been closed down. I'm not sure at this point whether it has been closed because it had to be or because engineers want to check it out before they allow vehicular traffic back onto that bridge again. But uh, one of the most dramatic pieces of, of audio that we heard, and if you were watching us five or ten minutes ago, you will have seen uh, a uniformed, I'm not sure if he was a fireman or a policeman, uh, who was warning people in one of the... Uh, neighborhoods of San Francisco, the marina area where this enormous fire is blazing. You've got about 90 minutes of daylight left. That clearly was a couple of hours ago. Do what you have to do and do it right now because prepare for three days of no services. And that was repeated a little bit later on. 72 hours of no services. By that I am sure they mean gas and water and electricity and telephones. All right, we're now going to go to Christy Welter at San Jose Hospital for a status report there. Christy? This is Christy Welter at San Jose Medical Center, and we have had four patients in tonight, one of whom just died of cardiac arrest. The others are victims of things falling on them, and at this point, we're not sure of their condition. We have been told to expect some other patients uh, there are, we're a trauma center, so we're obviously on call 24 hours a day. There is one hospital that we have been told has structural damage and may have to evacuate some patients, but we have not been, you know, con it's not been confirmed when or how many. Christy, can you give us some sense of overall what conditions are in San Jose? I mean, uh, did, the, uh, did the earthquake uh, strike heavily there? Were there aftershocks? How long did it last? And do you have any sense of what kind of damage there is throughout the city? There's a lot of damage in stores. I was at a meeting when it happened away from the, the medical center, and as I left, there was no electricity there, and there were people in an elevator that they were trying to extricate. Uh, all the stoplights are out. Most businesses have closed because things have fallen off their shelves. Christy, let me interrupt you just for one minute because we're looking at a map that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're talking about right now. You're in San Jose, which is some miles south of the area we were looking at right now. Go ahead, please. Yes. San Jose has 15 cities in the county, and some of the main arteries are now closed, so people are still trying to get home. They've been told not to use phones and not to, to get home and turn off electricity and gas and water. And many of them are panicked because they can't reach their loved ones. All right. Do you have any, uh, I don't know if you've gotten any more information than uh, has been available up north of you in terms of the number of casualties. I know you spoke of uh, the people who have come into that medical center there. And we've uh, had only one death, fortunately. And do you have any sense of what's happening in the rest of the city? Have you heard anything? Are the radio stations still operating? My understanding is that our death may be the only one in the county at this point. Well, that is, in fact, good news. What That's about what, news. what about damage to, uh, to buildings? Unbelievable damage to some of the buildings. Most buildings, as far as we know, there are none that have fallen. But the interior damage, stores and the shelves, things of that sort... Uh, have certainly toppled. Gas stations have closed because of the, the risk of fire from gasoline. All right, Christy Welder, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I know you have many more important things to attend to right now, so thanks for sharing some of that information with us. Also on the line is Richard Eisner uh, of the Bay Area Earthquake Preparedness Project. Uh, Mr. Eisner, what new information do you bring us? Well, we, we are getting the same reports that you are of ex extensive damage in the South Bay, as well as fires in San Francisco and the collapse of a freeway structure in Oakland. This is a, an earthquake, in fact, that was mentioned earlier that we've had two earthquakes, one a year ago and one this last August, that we thought possibly could be foreshocks, and it turned out that, in fact, those earthquakes indicated that stress was building to the point that we could have a great quake. 
Can you just tell us, Mr. Eisner, is there anything we should be looking for right now? Are, are there any signs that, that you, as an experienced observer of earthquakes, can point to and say, this is what is likely to happen, that is more aftershocks, or have we seen the worst of it now? Well, this probably, in all likelihood, was the, the, the main event. This was the large quake. A, a Richter 7 magnitude on that segment of the fault is probably as large as that segment could generate. But we could expect aftershocks in the Richter 5 to 6 range, in all likelihood, they will occur over the next several days and weeks. Uh, but the problem right now is just dealing with the life-saving, getting people out of collapsed buildings, and uh, getting the situation stabilized. All right, Mr. Eisner, thank you very much. Uh, what you're looking at right now, which doesn't look like much of a picture, because as we have been telling you repeatedly, uh, the electricity, the power is out in San Francisco. But that is San Francisco down below, uh, as shot from the Goodyear blimp. And the commander of the blimp is Captain John Creighton. Captain Creighton, can you hear me? And, and uh, what can you see with the naked eye that perhaps we are not seeing quite as well with the camera at this time of night? Captain Creighton? Captain, we see you, but we don't hear you. There, there we Hi, go. Go ahead. This is from the Goodyear Bit Columbia. We're over San Francisco, and we just got a report from the San Francisco Tower that they've done quite a bit of damage there. Also, we were over the Bay Bridge when it collapsed. We were listening to the rescue helicopters by the Coast Guard. We understand that three people were evacuated by helicopter from the Bay Bridge. And they are now addressing. Maybe you can give us a little bit of information based on what you've been not only seeing, but also what you have been hearing on some of those emergency channels. What else do you know about what's going on? Captain, I'm sorry, we, we didn't hear you just then. Uh, I, I realize I've got to stop talking before you can start talking, but go ahead. Captain Creighton? Three, four, five. This is John Creighton talking. Go ahead, sir. We can hear you now. Well, actually, we can't hear you right now. All right. We have someone from the International Association of Fire Chiefs. Forgive me, sir, I didn't catch your name as it was being fed to me over my earpiece. Mr. Mr. Estep, um, you're right here in Washington with me. Uh, I, I, let me just mention a few things that I've noticed during the course of the, uh, of the evening's coverage and then have you comment on them. One of the reporters from KGO uh, was talking about having driven through the streets of San Francisco and smelling gas uh, at just about every intersection. It sounds ominous. Uh, tell me how, how severely that should be viewed. Ted, I think at this point, uh, the San Francisco Fire Department obviously is in a disaster response mode. And probably at this point, there's a great deal of assessment going on to actually determine the scope of the emergency. From the signs that we see, we obviously know that there are, there is a widespread, uh, there are widespread fires and other emergency medical incidents have occurred. Obviously, uh, with a quake of this magnitude, you could have ruptured gas lines. You could also have your water supply cut off. Uh, we've all had difficulty getting in. As a matter of fact, the chief of the San Francisco Fire Department is in Boston preparing to return to San Francisco now. And uh, I was due to meet with him tomorrow, and we've been in touch with him. The only thing he's been able to determine is that his family is okay. So communications right now is a very difficult thing out of there. All right. Again, I know uh, you are being cautious, and it's, it's commendable. I just want to get some sense uh, of what it is that those, that those ruptured gas mains mean in terms of what the fire department and what emergency squads are going to be able to do. How do you, when it is pitch black out there, uh, when there has been a great deal of damage and there are a number of fires, how do you cap those gas lines? Well, that would be a very difficult situation uh, to do. In some cases, if there were no buildings exposing uh, where those uh, mains were burning, you would let them burn. Uh, you certainly would not want to put that fire out if uh, the gas was going to continue. Chief, uh, forgive yes. me for interrupting you, but we have apparently some late-breaking developments out at uh, KGO, so we switch back now to our affiliate out in San Francisco, KGO. Okay. 
Oakland and Berkeley and of course in San Francisco and the hardest hit right now that we are aware of is the Marina District where several buildings fell on the Divisadero Street area and people were roaming in the streets and a very, very terrifying situation right now. Uh, we had reports from people who were on the Bay Bridge at the time that section of the bridge collapsed on the upper deck. Two women told me that they saw a man, they were in their cars, heading to San Francisco from Oakland. They saw a man on a motorcycle waving madly at them and they thought that he was just a little crazed or something. Then they saw all the traffic slowing down. Then they saw a mass of people running, running their way, trying to get out of harm's way. So apparently when they were in the car, they had felt, they thought they had a flat tire. Many, many other people did. The folks just left their cars on the bridge, locked them up and ran into San Francisco. I have with me right now, Dan Levitt. You are out at Candlestick, game three of the World Series. That isn't happening now, Dan. No, it's not. And uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly what the uh, method or what the operation will be here now as far as the World Series goes, period. It, at 5.04, I was standing outside of the stadium uh, in the van, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the Channel 7 vans. It started moving, and obviously I thought somebody was playing around with me, and so I jumped out of the van. As I jumped out, I saw the entire parking lot moving like this. I looked up at the structures uh, in the stadium itself. The light standards were moving. Uh, it was at that time that uh, Eric Christensen, my producer, and we took off and, and tried to get a hold of uh, some authorities. Uh, and we, the first one we could get to, of course, was the commissioner of baseball who was waiting in his box on the uh, first base side, waiting to see if he could get some word. And we finally got it from him, and this was it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are postponing the game because there is no power in the stadium. We would like you to leave in an orderly way. I don't believe there's any great danger. But we have no idea when the power is going to be on, and we have to get people out of here before it gets dark. So if you'll leave in an orderly way while there's still light, I think everybody can leave in a graceful fashion. Please leave. The game has been postponed. There'll be no baseball tonight. Thank you. A few words? Do you know the extent of what's happened so far? No, not all I have at this point is I talked to our operations center. They say that there is a building with partial damage at 6th and Brandon. There's also a building with uh, partial collapse around Turk and Fillmore, and that there is some structural damage to the Hall of Justice. I'm going to be leaving the ballpark now to go down to the Hall of Justice while they're continuing to get an estimate around the city of any kind of damage, and then we'll make a determination there as to what's to be done. But our command post will be located at Northern Police Station at Turk and Fillmore. What may be the uh, understatement of the night, that announcement by uh, Faye Vincent, the commissioner of baseball, that there will be no baseball tonight. Uh, the question is when, uh, if at all, there will be baseball again in the, in the Bay Area in the very near future because we have already heard now, albeit indirectly, uh, that they may be without power in the Bay Area for as much as 72 hours, still standing by here in Washington. Uh, Chief Estep, uh, you were just in the process of explaining to me how they are going to contain uh, some of those gas leaks, which, which may in fact prove to be the greatest danger of the night in San Francisco, right? That's right. Uh, again, Ted, if, if uh, the situation is not life-threatening, uh, they may just let those burn in, in respect to those means. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, at, uh, even while you were talking, I'm, I'm getting more information in my ear. I understand that there is a fire commissioner from San Francisco, Frank Quinn, who is standing by at our studio in Los Angeles. Uh, commissioner Quinn, what can you add to, uh, perhaps you could put into some kind of... Go ahead, sir. I'm uh, trying to get through to our headquarters right now. I happen to be in Los Angeles discussing earthquake preparedness when this occurred. And the chief here uh, is offering help, but we're trying to get through to the San Francisco office, and I'm going to have to hang up so I can talk to San Francisco. All right, can I ask you one question very sure. quickly? Uh, apparently, I mean, we're hearing men on the ground who are going through the streets and who are urging residents of San Francisco to prepare for all the services being out for at least 72 hours. Is that one of the first things that you do is turn off the gas everywhere, for example? Yes, that's right. That's right. Gas is a major problem. It was in 1906, and it is uh, today. And I've seen pictures on TV that uh, remind me of 1906, of photographs I've seen then. So we can assume that, period, the gas is being turned off. What about the electricity, uh, the in water? In areas where wires are down, and I suspect it throughout the entire city, uh, it will be turned off. All right. Commissioner Quinn, I know you have far more important things to do. Thank you for sharing even Thank a couple you, of minutes Scott. with us. Thank you, sir. 
All right, let me uh, try and set the, uh, uh, the evening for you a little bit. Those of you, perhaps, who are just joining us uh, and who were hoping to see the last couple of innings of Game 3 of the World Series, you should know that did not happen tonight because even as the World Series was about to begin, an earthquake struck. Uh, not merely the San Francisco area. That uh, apparently is about... Oh, 40 or 50 miles north of the epicenter of this earthquake. We have yet to get some of the news from the areas that may have been hardest hit, but what you're looking at here uh, is a segment of the upper level of the Bay Bridge that connects Oakland uh, and San Francisco. There you're looking at uh, one of the highways which looks to be fairly badly buckled uh, from this high shot. You can see what looks to be a segment of collapsed highway there. Uh, there has been one particularly bad fire. Again, you'll see these folks are sort of laughing and jumping around as though it were a relatively minor affair and to them at the moment it may have been uh, but San Francisco has been rather badly hit and that fire which we have been watching now for most of the night because uh, if only because it's the it's the only piece of major light that you can see in San Francisco right now that video taped earlier from the Goodyear blimp is a fire uh, in the marina section of San Francisco, a residential area, and even though you see water being poured on the fire right now, I am told that later on they stopped the water because they were afraid that in dousing the fire uh, they were going to create noxious fumes because it's believed that that fire began uh, from a ruptured gas pipe. And that, at the moment, is one of the great concerns in and around the San Francisco area. Uh, that where you have, and we heard uh, one of our colleagues from KGO in San Francisco talking about the smell of gas. There's a shot that was taken earlier this evening uh, at Candlestick Park, and you can see uh, that there are pieces of, uh, of cement block. Uh, this is now that area in the marina area. These pieces of tape sort of randomly edited together so that we can give you an overview of what's been happening. You can see what's happened to the houses there and the, the one house about half a block away just totally destroyed. Uh, and it was in that section of San Francisco uh, that uh, members of the uh, fire department and the police were walking around warning residents uh, to make the most of the daylight area. Uh, of the daylight that was left about 90 minutes or so Great, because uh, the essential services area, were going to be cut uh, off. That is, gas was going to be cut off, water was going to be cut off, electricity was going to be cut off, and it may be that much of San Francisco will not have any of those essential services for as much as the next three days. We're going to uh, tell our local affiliates now that we're going to be staying on the air through the local news. Obviously, local stations will make their own decisions as to how much, if any, of this coverage that uh, they want to take. But we're going to be on the air through your local news and then into our regular nightline period at uh, 11.30 uh, East Coast. And uh, we will be on at 2.30 in the morning our time so that we're on live for the West Coast to give you a complete wrap-up of what has been happening throughout the evening and what is happening in terms of rescue operations and emergency operations. The Associated Press, incidentally, is now reporting that there are as many as 47 dead. But all of that, I must tell you, is all preliminary information. The biggest problem that everyone has on the West Coast right now in the Bay Area and down south into San Jose and Santa Cruz uh, is that information is A, hard to come by, uh, and what's even more difficult is uh, the communication. Uh, the telephone systems are badly overburdened right now. Once again, AT&T uh, asks that you not make calls into the Bay Area, into the San Francisco and uh, Oakland and Berkeley areas because there are people there who are trying to make calls out. They have the information you don't. It may very well be that by calling in, you're preventing someone who has the information uh, from getting that information out. Now, we will be on the air live a little more than one half hour from now in our regular nightline period, and we will be on the air live for the West Coast for our nightline period, 2.30 Eastern Time, 11.30 Pacific Time. We're going to give uh, our stations along the line uh, a breakaway signal so that you can go, those of you who want to, can go to your local news. Uh, those of you who want to stay with us, 
and get a, a, a further sense of what is going on out there in the Bay Area, we will be keeping you up to date with all the information that comes to us as quickly as we get it. Once again, the Associated Press is reporting that 47 people have died in the earthquake, which hit the Bay Area and the area down the line of the San Andreas Fault, all the way down to Santa Cruz there with San Jose in the middle, uh, and uh, Hollister, California, that area has been badly hit from San Francisco south down to Santa Cruz. And uh, joining me now from the White House with some late information from the White House is our White House correspondent, Britt Hume. Britt? Uh, Ted, uh, I just talked to a senior White House official who told me that they have been able to get in touch with a couple of fire departments in those areas to the south of San Francisco, most hard hit in Santa Cruz. Uh, the fire department told them that there are some buildings down and others that look like they're going to go down. He said, however, that the information was sketchy because all of the fire department resources and people are out on the streets trying to do what they can. And that information apparently is similar to information that they've gotten from other areas uh, nearer San Jose. Uh, one other note, Ted, uh, Vice President Quayle was out on the West Coast today and uh, he is tonight in San Diego and has decided to stay over and uh, we'll do so uh, and await uh, a conversation in the morning with Transportation Secretary Skinner, who is leaving here in a matter of a uh, half hour or so to fly out there and get as close to the scene as he can before deciding whether he will go up uh, to tour the area or do whatever appears appropriate. So right. that is the latest here. I know you gave us some information earlier on uh, on uh, what FEMA is doing and on uh, the president's awareness of what's going on, but just sort of bring us up to speed again on uh, what the White House has been doing. Well, the, fr the president has gotten a, a report here uh, from the Federal Emergency Management Agency and, the Fed and, and, the, and FEMA has set up a command post and is in full operation tonight at its own headquarters and will be coordinating whatever the federal government activities uh, that are decided upon. Uh, Governor Sununu has uh, uh, spoken to the Pentagon and military officials there have authorized such help as FEMA may uh, uh, deem appropriate and that will be forthcoming if and when it is needed. So what we have, uh, Ted, is a situation where there is uh, more of a readiness to act here than there is information upon which uh, to take those decisions. And as it comes in, I anticipate we're going to see a massive effort on, on the part of the federal government to try to help this situation. All right. Britt Hume, thank you very much. Let me just point out to our local stations in just a few seconds, it will be 11 o'clock Eastern time. Those of you who want to break away, please do. We will be here with more information for those who do not. This special report came to you from ABC News. We now resume our regular program schedule.